Hi, this is Felissa Rose. I'm Angela Baker from Sleepaway Camp. I'm actually with the Skeleton Crew. Meet me at the waterfront after the social. Damn, you look good. Is this all the cash you got? That's all. Empty your pockets. Look, I haven't got it. Empty your fucking pockets, asshole. Or I'm going to ask my buddy here to bring me something off the hardware shelf that I can use to slice off your fingers. You're listening to The Skeleton Crew exclusively on Harbit.com and the Horrorphilia Podcast Network. All right, all you skeleton crew, thrill me, you sons of bitches. Big fan of your show. Me and the other guy who listens. Um, I think it's it's fantastic. <laughs> All right, guys. It's summertime. Memorial Day has passed. We are into it now. So you better be wearing your white shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually am. <laughs> the thing is, you know, we talked about it before. I only watch Halloween movies in October because, let's face it, it's it's better to save something and make it special. Look forward to them again. We've watched them ad nauseum. We memorized every line. Is there really a need to put them on at our disposal? Is that really necessary? There's so many other movies out there to enjoy and discover. Why just watch Halloween every single month? I don't see a point. I stopped doing it. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm a big fan and all that, but I just like that special thing, and w- this falls right into it. It's the summertime, and there's a lot of things that you probably only watch in the summer, and that makes that special. So, uh, you know, we came up with a little thing, top five movies that we watch in the summer. Uh, horror movies, we have a top five for that. And, uh, we even have top five non-horror summer movies. And, uh, you know, we'll interchange and go here and there. So, uh, Dan, what is the... Let's start with a horror movie. What's one horror movie you watch every single summer? Friday the 13th Part 2. Great choice. Oh, my God, I love it, dude. That, to me, is fucking summertime, baby. And I try and save that. It's tough, but that's one of those that it pays... It pays off in the end if you can save it, so, yeah. It's funny you say that, man. All growing up my whole life, that's the only Friday the 13th I owned. Really? Yeah. And the only vivid memories I have of that movie were watching it late summer nights when I was home from school. And it was like 11 o'clock at night. My parents were upstairs sleeping. Yes! I was downstairs. All the windows were open. The cool night summer air was just coming in, man. And that movie was boss, man. That was like... taste it. Oh, taste it. it best summer movie for Friday 13th. That's definitely, it's funny you say that, that's probably the best one to watch in the summer at night, I think. Right. Yep. Friday 13th Part 1, I feel like you could watch it even in the fall and it's just as good. Right. But it's yep. not, a, it doesn't hit summer as well as 2 does and neither does 4. 4, it, four is weird because sometimes it does for me because it's sometimes. got that, sometimes, but not all the time, dude. For for pure summer epicness, dude, yeah, 2, two is where it's at, man, for sure. Absolutely. You know? Jamie, uh, you agree with that? You watch that every summer? I watch them all. Yes. Yeah, me too. That I was going to say that too. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So... Yeah, I mean, there there really isn't one that says summer to me more than others. There are there are a few that don't say summer, like eight. Um, right. Right, right. Nothing says summer to me about you know Jason taking Manhattan. Um, <laughs> nothing says summer like Jason goes to hell. Well, if you think about it, one reason Jamie that it doesn't is it's it's in your mind subconsciously. No one's dressed for summer. Everyone has right full clothes on so it wouldn't it wouldn't register as a summer movie so right, right. well I still, well you know and even though they're at camp and in part six oh. uh, everyone's like megan's always wearing a jacket and jeans and so everyone's dressed in warm clothes there too so i never really even though it's at camp i right. just i don't ever think of it as necessarily summer also the, right. that 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 particular installment is i went to high school with one of the campers oh yeah which one and so it makes me think of school uh terry epstein i mean i'm sorry timmy epstein is her real name 
Um, but she just played one of the. Um, she had a speaking part. One of the little dark haired camper girl in That's the cool. in the cat. That's awesome. But, so that it always makes me think of school instead of summer. You right, know. Right. Right. I know okay. her. And plus, but, like you said too, that that storm at the end there. I mean, that that looked like a cold ass fucking storm. What part? Which one? What was that? Uh, six. Was it six. Was the it the storm? You mean the wind blowing around? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. With yeah. It does. Pop had a jacket. That's like really cold. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like fall. I think of that as a fall movie. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. All right. So Friday Thirteenth. That's an obvious one, but it's uh, it's in there. It's just like Halloween for October. It's as obvious, but it's still there. Yep. Uh, okay, I'll go to a non-horror one. My all-time, probably top five ever movies, this is just, I'm looking at it right now, it's a screen desktop, uh, Point Break, Oh, that's on my list! Yep. Oh, shit! Um, I probably watched that movie, how many times do we watch Point Break a year? Like, four or five times. Every year? Wow, really? Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. If it's on cable... We watch it, and then sometimes we well, I've watched it twice already this year because wow. um, I got the Blu-ray and yeah, me too. And then there was another time on cable. Hey Utah, give me two. <laughs> hey, I got so- I got something to tell you guys. Punk, guess, who- guess who's punk. never seen Point Break? You. Hey quarterback punk. Never seen <laughs> Johnny Unitas or something. Dan, you've never seen this. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, Dan has not seen this. I, d- I, um, well. <laughs> what do we do about that? See it. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Okay. How did you, even after watching like Hot Fuzz, didn't, it didn't make you want to see this just to get the, you know, ah, uh, reference, you know? I've, I've wanted to see it. Is that what that was? I love that movie. I didn't yeah. know that was a point break. Well, what was the reference? It's like, uh, cause he, at, in, in Hot Fuzz, he, uh, turns to Simon, uh, Nick Frost turns to Simon Pegg and he's like, so, do you ever like shoot your gun into the air and go ah? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, he's like, no, I've never shot my gun into the air and gone ah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's after the chase with Bo. Do you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How good is Simon Pegg in Star Trek In the Darkness too? He fucking he's got a bigger role. He's he's awesome in that movie. Who's that? Uh, Scotty. Scotty. Scotty, open the door. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that's that. Good. Too. Yep. But yeah, no, I uh, yeah, never seen it, but uh, I will. Maybe, maybe, maybe it'll become a new summer tradition. I'll watch it this summer, and you know, oh, dude, this movie, this is what uh, Fast and Furious ripped off. Right, of. I know. It's I the know. exact, I know, exact storyline. I knew that without even seeing it. I just know that fact. Ex- I know it's the same thing, like scene for scene. Actually, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's crazy, right? Except for I don't. Well, I don't. Th- well, I mean, I. I it, it still applies and, and you're totally right but I don't feel like um, I feel like Paul Walker's and Keanu Reeves characters are slightly different because mm. Keanu Reeves didn't know dick about what he was getting into I mean like he'd never even seen mm. the ocean before you know um, and Paul drove a car before like a race car Paul, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? yeah he was already he was already infiltrated into right. that lifestyle like uh, he you know knew what he undercover was undercover cop yeah Oh, okay. Yeah, well, there's uh, that's character development. You know, you got to see John Utah actually get better at it. And Oh, yeah. That's the cool thing about it, though, because Bodie knew that Johnny just started. So it was very... The character bond from a single sentence at the end of the movie when Bodie's standing there looking at the ocean, and he, you know, they both know why they're there. They both know this is not going to end well, but he still looks at him. He's like... He's still surfing. He's like, every day. And he just shook his head, yeah, like, cool, man. Like, that right there mm. is, like, epicness in the most minuscule way. Like, so subtle and such a nothing. But anyone who truly loves this movie, when he says, still surfing, you just you just have this, you love it, man. It's like the greatest, because you love their relationship. And you love it when Johnny shoots that gun in the air. Because it's like, yeah, man, Bodie's the man. Don't, you know, come on, man, screw this cop shit. Why don't you guys just, you know, be buds and don't do all that? And it's just, like, perfect. Mm. I'll and have that, to check this shit out, yo. You're, you're selling it. You're selling yeah. it. Like, that line's amazing. It has amazing chase scenes in cars, amazing chase oh, scenes on, on feet. Foot, yep. I mean, yeah. on foot. <laughs> Proud <laughs> on, feet. 
I'll feed you. Nice to meet your feet. So, uh, movie's great. It's classic. I have the soundtrack. I have, uh, I have the, the score of the movie. I watch this every summer. It's perfect. I, when I was a kid, I used to go to the beach. When I met kids there, I lied and said my name was Bodie. Oh, and you did not. Did not. you really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and one time I got busted. I said it to a bunch of 20-year-olds, and they were like, Hey, isn't that that guy's name? No. Point? Yeah, and I was like, Yeah, my, my dad was a big fan. And they're like, You're already like uh, 14 years old, and the movie's from 1990. <laughs> it's all in the timeline. And it's only 1997. <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, I know, but uh, he kind of knew that they... Uh, okay, I lied. <laughs> so, <I'll leave. laughs> yeah, I'm an asshole. So, movie's great. I watch it every summer. I recommend everybody does it. Great movie. So, sure. Jamie. Yes. Oh, also, summer. for hmm. horror fans out there, if this will tempt you and if you've never seen it, it's it was made by Catherine Bigelow, who also oh, made Near Dark. Um, Near and- Dark? Yeah, near and the Hurt Locker and fucking what's it called? Everything. <laughs> yes. She's awesome. Okay. Um, you want horror or non? What you got? Okay, got, we'll go back to horror. I got everything. Okay. Well, a, a given for me is Jaws. Oh, it's not dang. summer if I haven't watched Jaws, See? and usually what happens is I'll come home from work and. And Jaws will be already playing on TV right. because, and I'm like, you're watching Jaws again, and Patrick's like, it was on Showtime. <laughs> oh, he's addicted to it too. Oh God, yes. <laughs> okay, let me ask you this now. We already talked about Jaws, so we could kind of gloss over it, but I do want to get your your thoughts on. You're so big into Jaws, uh, just like we're big into like first movies of of franchises. What do you think of the rest of them? Like, do you do you dig all of them every summer or what? I um. It's not a, a have to kind of thing. If I get the opportunity, I do watch them. But really, I find two to be really good. I mean, basically, yep. it's uh, it's one. I mean, yeah, it's the pretty much. I mean, it's not as good, not, not even close. Right, but it's right. you know, it's good. Mm-hmm. Three is fun for me because I remember I saw that in the theater. And I remember I sat there the entire time with my feet up in the chair, and I was just terrified. And, oh, shit, I'm sorry, Dan. I'm telling a story again. Look at me go. Oh, um, <laughs> but uh-huh. um, I, uh, the, the graphics are terrible. I mean, it's oh, just yeah. so bad. Terrible. They're Everything, horrendous. That movie is bad. But, um, but you still watch it. But, um, yeah, I still watch it. The fourth one, I really can only stomach that about once a decade. I really just wow. Don't, to watch it any more than that um michael kane just didn't do anything to save it i've never been a fan of mario van peebles and um <laughs> uh, i just uh, I, I, I mean the whole <laughs> you say it like so yeah. many people are <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure he has fans out there i'm just not one of them <laughs> not, not like the whole rest of the world yeah, i'm sure his aunt and his uncle think he's really good um <laughs> But um, it just, uh, yeah, that whole, I mean, at that point with the whole revenge thing, that's just dumb. Oh. <laughs> so, um, you know. All right. Good choice. Dan, uh, non-horror. Well, that was on my list too, Jamie. Thanks for stealing it. I'm sorry. I just want to add on my two cents on Jaws real quick too. Um, I find it hard to do this, but I have to wait till 4th of July weekend to watch it. Cool. I have well, to. It's so difficult. Where you are, I guess that makes sense. Um, well, and that's when the movie you know, takes. I mean, the, it's well. No, I know. That's what I'm saying. It makes sense because you, know, you can. You have such a a close proximity to so many things. Jaws. Um, Dan, do you go there every like Fourth of July where the scenes were? Like, are you that into it or no? That bras. They're Monday. <laughs> I made. I well, because we were going to the vineyard, and I made my buddy. File. I'm like, dude. I'm like, you know, you know which way I want to go, because there's two ways you can go, you know, one side of the island or the other. And uh, yeah, we we take the long way to fucking go through the Jaws territory. Honestly, guys, it's just water. It's not like there's a big sign that says Jaws was filmed here, but it's, yeah. just, <laughs> it's, it's okay. Can you do me a favor? Water. Yes. Could you um oh, some water? Please. Do some screenshots of the movie and then take some ones in real life that match up to them. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have one of those things like a normal person? 
Do you I have like a camera? I, <laughs> <laughs> I do, but like, yeah, it's it's just a big body of water. Like, yeah, but so yeah. you're not gonna help us out. Okay, thanks, buddy. I will. No, I've done it. I have. <laughs> But you're just gonna go. Oh, that's water. Oh, what's that? A boo? When I come to Massachusetts, will you take me? Uh, we're going to Lizzie Borden's house. We're going to Salem. We're going. Yes, we're going to the vineyard to hey. to draw territory, and we're going to my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, are you mounting or weekly or what? <laughs> weekly, son. What you think this is? I'm a I'm a growing young boy. So it's nightly, just like Robert Rustler. <laughs> Felt like a hawk at Delhi at night. Something. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, um, Jamie, thanks for stealing my Jaws Thunder, by the way. No, I'm just kidding. All but right. yeah, so um, I'll, I'll, do dude, we're yo, know, we're on it like a bonnet when you come to Massachusetts. Um, one of the other ones though, and I think you guys will be very proud of me. And uh, I, I never up until this summer, man. You know what I'm gonna say. Fucking sleepaway camp, man. All ah, of them, yeah. two and that's three. One, two, and three. Two. So, um, yeah, so that's going to be a new little tradition. I've actually been itching uh, to watch those movies for for a few weeks now. So when I get the time, I'm definitely going to blast those. And, dude, those to me is kind of like the same with uh, with Friday, too. It's just got that summer feel, man. It's that cheesiness. and More fun. so, dude. More, more so, so than Friday 13th. Yeah. And they definitely captured camping way better than Friday 13th on each movie. Like, yep. this is not even a comparison. No one's saying they're better, but they definitely did a way better well, job. I mean, this one's actually about the campers and not, right. you know. Right. In Friday the 13th, we rarely see the campers. I'm like, oh, yep. there are actual children involved? <laughs> right, right. Mm-hmm. I, never knew, I never knew children went to summer camp until I was 17 years old. I, mm-hmm. thought, I thought it was nothing but teenagers having sex and drinking and smoke. I'm totally but, kidding about that. but um, <laughs> I know what you're saying, Jamie. I always had a fucking thing with that, too. Like, this isn't camp, but I do like that whole, hey, we're setting up and we're, we're getting ready for camp. We're getting ready for the kids to come. In. You know what I mean? Like, it, it took yeah. me a while, but once I got that concept, I'm like, that's pretty cool because, really, you're alone in the fucking woods for a week before, you know, it really gets busy and shit like that. So I, I know what you're saying, though. I yeah, but you know it. what, though? If you think about it, part one – was getting ready and setting it up for camp never happened. Part two was uh, across the lake, they were training to be camp counselors. Part three oh, was right. Higgins Haven. Part four was out, um, outskirts, uh, houses on the outskirts of Crystal Lake. Right. Part five was a mental institution. Part six finally brought it back to camp yeah. and actually had kids in it. Part seven, house is on the outskirts. It's not even in camp. Part right. eight, in Manhattan. It's not camp. So if you think about it, right. it is really barely about Crystal Lake itself, uh, uh, Camp Crystal Lake itself. That's a good observation, dude. We never even said that in our fucking retrospectives. That's well, we only one. had eight and a half. Wait, no. How many hours? <laughs> yeah, eight hours. I wasn't here yet. Yeah, Jamie, yeah, Jamie would have caught that. She would have got that. So that's the thing about it. Uh, Sleepaway Camp, dude, I'm so glad. As the people who follow our Facebook know, I did the ultimate geek move, and I went on Zazzle.com. Zazzle? And I bought... (laughs) His name is Zazzle because he's Zazzy. I'm (laughs) Zazzy. I bought replica shirts of Sleepaway Camp 1, 2, and 3. Those are badass. Uh, I think that's really awesome. I want them as well. I love them. I even bought them a little tighter so I look like those people in the 80s. And I'm actually digging that look. <laughs> Are you wearing some of those really sexy, super tight short shorts? That's the only place I'm not willing to go. Aww. But, yeah. I want you to wear those and then like knee socks. Like with the yeah, stripes, you, know? you have to. The, yeah. golden, yeah, the golden green stripes. <laughs> Dude, Jonathan Tears would be so happy. Should I grow my hair like TC? Yes. <laughs> oh, Merle the Pearl. Hmm. Um, TC was, uh, he was on Eight is Enough. I mean, he played one of the daughter's husbands um, who was a professional baseball player named Merle the Pearl. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, Dan, I'm very proud of you. I I love, we. you heard our retrospective. The only person you haven't heard from is Jamie. But, uh, Jamie, you love them all. Uh, we want to do a quick ranking. Uh, I know Jamie, she always goes for the big dog. She's going one, two, three, right? Remember, I'm trying to remember if I went one, two, three, or one, three, two. Two and three are. I usually watch them 
together, yeah. Together. Yeah. Um, and they were made yeah. together. I mean, they were made at the same time. Oh, you know? were they? So, yeah. yeah oh. They were filmed at the same time. So it, oh. Um, and oh. I went to high school with one of those guys, too, um, Emilio. From yeah? The, yeah. The kid who takes pictures of naked girls? <laughs> yeah, he was one of the. Remember that? Blonde, yeah, he was a little blonde kid that was taking pictures. Um, yeah, I went to high school with him. Jason Ehrlich is his name. That's um, funny. Dude. He went on. He's a producer now. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. But anyway, um, what's the question? Oh, one. Th- <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. So what let's just go one. I'll just say one, two, three, because like I said, two and three are they're pretty much interchangeable for me. Yeah. Honestly, I feel like this is the most bizarre franchise as a whole for the – and I don't count four. Let's not, I don't even want to think about four. So no. um, <laughs> the way I think of it is one is one and two and three are completely – have nothing right. and don't feel like anything to do with each other. I honestly watch them together, but I don't think of them as, as three movies of a franchise. I just happen to watch one and then two and three. Like, yeah. You know, yep. mentally, they're not yep. one big thing to me. That's a, that's weird, dude, how we all think the same way about those kind of movies. I mean, it's not like they were conceptualized like that. But, yeah, that's how a lot of people uh, that's how it is. compartmentalize them. Yeah. So there you go. Mm-hmm. All right. So I got a really goofy-ass movie that I watch every summer. I've been, I've been doing this since uh, I was 14. So uh, this has been going on for about 15 years or so. It's called An American Summer. This oh, is dude. one of the worst movies. Oh, you, <laughs> you know this movie? I know, yeah. Wait, oh, yeah, my yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. It's almost a horror I movie. I know Wet Hot American Summer. <laughs> that I think I should check out. Just for the name of it. <laughs> Wait, maybe I'm confusing the two. Alex, explain your movie. All right, this one stars like Michael Landis and the kid from 90210, <laughs> uh, Brian Austin Green, and... I don't know it. I was thinking of Wet Hot American Summer. Like okay. Shit. So this kid, his parents divorce. He lives in Chicago, but they're going through a messy divorce. So they send him over to live with his aunt in California for the summer, when, you know, since he'll be at, at a school and they have no nowhere to put him for the summer. So he goes there and he leaves the house. He bumps into the kid from now to an O. And this kid from now to an O is like 12 years old or 14. He looks really right. little. Mm-hmm. And uh, he just – they he – he hooks up with this chick. He teaches him how to surf. He does a surf competition. They have a rivalry at the beach. You've got to look at the trailer. Just watch the trailer, and you'll see how this is so good or so bad it's good. <laughs> nice. This is the epitome, and I love this movie. It's on Netflix right now. Absolutely, it's free, guys, if you have it. Just check it out. It's really funny. And there's a killer in the movie. They actually witness something. Huh. That gets them in trouble. So just for that, it's and the killer is the cheesiest thing on earth. Mm. You must watch this. So that's all I'll say. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. So just watch it. It's really kind of funny and cool, and it's a tradition of my life, and I'll watch till the day I'm dead. So nice. I'll check that out, dude. That that sounds good. Yep. So uh, Jamie, yo, non horror. Um, Michael J. Fox, Nancy McKeon flick uh, from 1980. Five, I think, um, called Poison Ivy. And it also has um, Adam Baldwin really? and as the rival as the rival camp counselor. And uh, they're both uh, – well, Michael J. Fox is a camp counselor. Nancy McKean is the nurse. Michael J. Fox has a crush on the nurse. Adam Baldwin is his rival counselor. And um, I think T.K. Carter is in it too. Uh, oh, my and, God. I'm remembering this movie as you're talking about it's it. It's just they Holy have color. Holy shit. They have color wars, um, <gasps> right, you know. It's just, yes, I love this movie. Oh my god, um, yeah, and that and um, I'll just go ahead and throw it in real quick. Is Meatballs, um, Meatballs. another camp movie? Yeah, but um, yeah. that one is like the quintessential camp movie and super funny. Love Bill Murray. What I I have that and I went to watch it and I just wasn't digging it. Did does this does it get good at some point? I think it's good the whole time, but that's just me. I don't yeah, know. Maybe, maybe, I, maybe um, maybe it just wouldn't be funny to your generation. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I, I was an '80s child. I was a little kid in the '80s. Jamie's an old hag. I was a little kid in the '70s. <laughs> Get out of here! You're not old. 
I gotta watch Meatballs, man. Cause I tried watching, yeah, I tried watching Meatballs. I tried watching Porkies. I tried watching. Not like Cat- Porkies either. I just nothing grabbed me. I don't know what's wrong. I just tried. And I just couldn't do it. And I watched Caddyshack, and it was freaking horrible, man. What, was- dude? That was on my list. You fucking douche. Oh, it is. <laughs> Dude, I that is like the most biggest letdown to me. You do drugs, Danny? Every day, sir. Come on, dude. I don't know, man. Boy, get the foot off the boat. I think that and I think Animal House is insanely overrated. Dude, that was the other one on my list. I hate you so much. I hate you so much. It was Caddyshack, Animal House. Dude, if you say one derogatory thing about Days to Confused or about where's my other one? Where's my other one? I'm all fired up now. Oh, you got me all fucked up. I can't believe you just said that. Dude, isn't that weird about Animal House, though? But for some reason, I equate Animal House with drinking and summer drinking. Wow, so, really? Yeah, that happens. That's a lot. weird. That's a weird choice, though, right? Yeah, wow. I'm sorry, man. Yeah, I don't know. I, I gave <laughs> Animal House a chance. Look, it's not bad. It's just not that good to me. I, I Like, I watched. I was like, eh. Then all of a sudden, I heard Artie Lang talking about it. He's obsessed with John Belushi. He keeps saying Animal House is like the greatest epic thing in the world. Um, I well, heard. But, you know, to be honest, there are parts of it. I mean, I enjoy the film, but I check out during big right. chunks of it. I, right. And I, I do think it's overrated. Not um, not that it's not good, just that right. I don't think it's the end-all, be-all, as right. a lot of people seem no. to. You know? I, and I would say this. What do you guys think about this um, theory right now? Do you think that for its time, it was fucking hilarious, and it paved the way for a bunch of shit, but you know, it, it's not the end-all, be-all. I agree. I agree. I just enjoy it during the summer. You know, a lot of the times, I think it's on AMC or whatever. So I just like, you know, I remember hot days fucking grabbing a cold beer and watching Animal House. I love it, you know? Yeah, it's cool. No, dude. It's cool. I don't know. It just doesn't, um... But the same with you. Like, I like a few comedies that you just didn't Something grab. Something anally. What? What? <laughs> What the fuck did she just say? Oh, oh, I got one, though, you guys, that you cannot contest. Okay, Alex, if you say you don't like this as a summer movie, you're crazy. No, Animal House, though, you're right. I'm a little wacky for that one. All right, you guys, 4th of July movie. It is the quintessential summer movie. Don't tell me uh, the Will Smith movie. No. (laughs) Born on the 4th of July. Nope, nope, keep going. Oh, Saved by the Bell when Kelly does the Miss 4th of July pageant. Nope, nope. <laughs> Keep going. You got it. Jaws. <laughs> no, I already said Jaws. <laughs> I know, but I got nothing. Fourth of July? Yep. I don't know. Well, the Fourth of July is in it, but it's the quintessential summer fucking kids growing up movie. Come on. Stand by me. Stand it, by it's me. It's not That's stand not by list. me, but that is a great fucking pick. But for That's me, on my but, list. It is? Okay. Okay, think, think, stand by me, but with baseball. You're killing me, Smalls. Oh, the Bears or the Sandlot? Oh, Sandlot. Are you talking about the Sandlot? The sandlot. Come on. Oh my goodness, I saw that movie once. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, me too. I think I saw it once. You guys are crazy. That is fucking one of the best movies ever made. Dude, you never even watched Point Break ever. <laughs> <laughs> and we're crazy because we watched so it once. I don't need to see Alex, it. I've seen Fast so and Furious. Nice. Got one though. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> you guys are fucking. I crazy. got one. No, no, no. At this point in the I game, I shot him six times. I shot him six times. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm I'm calling on all the listeners because I know they'll have my fucking backs on this because you guys <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. No, but seriously, Sandlot is fucking fantastic for a summer movie so yep okay. <laughs> all right we blasted through a lot there i got a i got two tv shows i watch really quick married with children you cannot live without watching the beach episode oh, oh I saw that the other day dude i think it's called life's a beach i think <laughs> I love that episode it's so good it is genius every minute of it <laughs> Al Bundy was sitting in his little chair and it was in the sand and yep. Peg brought him, she said, I got something for you to read and it was a portable TV. Now, God only knows, it didn't really probably work. And every t- since she did that, every time I'm at the beach, I, I take out my iPhone and I watch that episode while I'm sitting there like Al. 
Now, it doesn't work because the sun is too much. <laughs> you fucking dork. <laughs> Dude, I live it. I live it, man. I love it. You know what? I love how dorky you are. I do. I do that shit, too. And I, I love it. You have Definitely. to. Hey, those three shirts I bought, you couldn't get worse than that. But this, I... is, this is coming from a chick who sang the first time ever I saw your face to a popcorn tin with Legolas on it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jamie, even wow. I wouldn't go that far. Did, Alex, did you did you think in Friday 4 when Teddy was putting that into the computer, was that really a computer there? I think it might have been because he kept coming up with the answers. Exactly. There's no computer. Aha. And there's no Betty. <laughs> and there's no more blowjobs. That was the worst part. Yeah. So I watched that and I, most people will not appreciate or care. I don't think anybody knows anything about the original Batman TV show with Adam West and Burt Ward. Well, and of course they do. Who doesn't? I don't ever hear people reference or talk about it, but whatever. If they do, Burt good. West? Do you leave the house like normal people? <laughs> Everybody knows Jamie, about it. <laughs> they know about it, but nobody talks about it, though. What? <laughs> I okay. don't know. Okay, good. Okay, go good, ahead. good. I'm wrong. Which episode? Uh, Surf's Up, Joker's Under. That is the episode where Batman has a surfing competition against the Joker. <gasps> what? Oh, my God. I remember seeing that. They wear their clothes completely with shorts over them. Yes, I remember that. <laughs> what, dude? It's on YouTube. You can watch it right now. I have the entire series, actually. Me dude, too, on DVD. incredible, dude. Oh, I watch it God. every summer. And the other summer uh, episode that is an absolute must, this is really random. It's the episode with Black Widow, played by um, Agnes Moorhead. I think is her name, or I think that's who it is. I'm not sure. I think it is, though. And the reason I watched that is because my dad took me to the beach when I was, like, 13 years old. And I remember coming back, and I had a, a little bit of a sunburn. And back then, the, that Batman TV show was on FX. Right. I Right. Yeah, and I used to tape them all from there. Nice. We had to leave, and I was really upset. I was like, God, I wanted to watch it. It's Sunday morning. I wanted to watch Batman, blah, blah. And I came home, and that was the one I watched. And I still had the the sun block on me, so I still had that smell on me. It was just a great atmosphere, and that to me is like a summer episode now. No, so. I totally get that. Um, like I remember when you were talking about that episode of Married with Children, mm -hmm. the very when that sh when that episode originally aired, I remember I had just found. Oh, this is so weird. I had just gone to get uh, my immunizations read like we call it uh, <laughs> updated. updated and um because i was about to go into college and or i just graduated high school and while i was there getting my shots i saw the uh the name of the name and phone number of a guy that i had a crush on in this in the third grade what and so i wrote it down <laughs> and I I called him that night what? during that episode of Married with Children. I remember wow. that like all oh. of that together. So now every time I watch that episode, I think about talking to him. And uh, uh -oh. and don't watch it with Patrick. It's just weird random memory. Oh yeah, he knows. It was third grade. <laughs> Do you guys ever remember your crushes in like first, second, third grade and try to look them up up on Facebook and you feel so? Oh yeah. Crazy? I did look a guy up on Facebook that I thought was uh, he might have been my first grade boyfriend, but it turns out that it was just some other guy with the just same name. Just some dude. You were like, no. "I love you." He was like, "I love you too." No, <laughs> I was like, "Hey, are you the same so and so <laughs> that went to this high school? You know, and or you know, elementary school?" And he was like, whatever. "No, but I got an eight inch hammer." No, I don't remember you, but I'd like to get to know you. <laughs> <laughs> I saw your picture. I think that me and you would be really good together. I saw your picture. There's only one of them, but I like your picture. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, so that's that. Uh, those are the ones. And for movies, just a quick mention, Commando. I watched that. Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's a great summer movie. So you want to pop that in every summer. Uh, that's about it um, for one me. More. So Jamie and Dan, you might have more, but I'm done. So go ahead. Well, I just have one more, and I can't even watch it anymore. But I used to watch it every single summer, um, and it's called Summer Girl. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, it's about a babysitter. Um, it was okay. The chick from Bill and do you guys know Bill and Ted? Fuck yeah! All right. The, she played uh, the dark-haired British chick. Um, <gasps> you know the, the princess. Yeah. Okay. He plays this babysitter who gets hired by this family, and and it's the same story that we've seen 150 times, where she tries to, uh, you know, she's gonna get rid of the mom, and and she's coming on to the dad, and all this. But I just love shit like that. I love obsession yeah. movies and stalker movies and things like that. I love them. So this one would always play in the summer, like on TBS when I was home from school, and it just I just watched it every summer. Well, now I cannot find it. I can't no. find it anywhere. Hmm. I've been dying to watch this movie forever, and I can't find it anywhere. So um, I'm sad. But it'll always be a summer movie to me, even if I What's never it called? It. Summer Girl? Yeah. When was it made? Boom. Boom. Oh, jeez. I don't know. Early 80s? Hmm. Oh, one more mention. I'm sorry. Just one of the guys I also love to watch. Oh, my God, dude. Such a good one. Yeah. Are you attempting to reference that on, on as many shows as possible? I know, Jamie. I knew you were going to say that. You know, I, I do pretty good at not saying the same thing more than once, and that's tough to do. But I do pretty good at that and memorizing what I've said before. So leave me alone. You know just, <laughs> just because we've done three Lords of Salem shows out of four it means nothing, or we did two ghost shows out of two means nothing, and uh, that's that. Go ahead. Do you, do you guys, uh, are you guys a fan of uh, Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Bed? Oh, my yes. God. That's another one. That's another summer yes. movie, right? Every time somebody cleans the kitchen, you got to go, the dishes are done, man. <laughs> yeah, dude. Exactly. That reminds me of a fucking summer or, movie. Right on top of that, Rose. If anybody asks for anything, we're all right on top of that, Rose. <laughs> Very good, Swellin. <laughs> that movie fucking rocks, dude. Yeah, yeah that and uh, like I said before, <clears throat> Dazed and Confused. I love that movie, so I try and watch that. Um, you know, save that for summertime, and then I hey, watch man. the shit. Yeah. So uh, that's the list. I think we covered a lot. Yeah, man. That was fucking. Yeah, people might say we didn't do five horror movies, but if if you count all the Friday Thirteenth and all the sleepaway camps, then I think we did. So oh, we, plus man, what, oh, all we do is watch horror movies. Fuck it, come on, <laughs> you know it's a it's a mixed bag of both. You know, there's a couple here, a couple there. If we were to give just our list of of horror movies or whatever, we could, but we want to try to encapsulate fucking summer here. So I think it's a mix, just like anything. No, you have to. You mm-hmm. have to do it that way. So, and plus, I think you got five summer movies in that list anyway. So, who me? Yeah, of course. No, everybody. I mean, all together. <laughs> oh, dude, yeah, we killed it. Absolutely, dude. That was fun. And you guys brought up a lot of movies that I hadn't even thought of, dude. So, guess who's expanding their list? Yeah, right. Fuck yeah, man. Me too, man. I I owe fucking Sleepaway Camp to you, man. So shit. Yeah. You know. Yep. All right, we'll be back after this. Summertime. Hello, this is Bert Young. You listen to the Skeleton Crow, and I don't sweat, yo. Uh, is it true that you really didn't want to do Rocky Six? No, I wanted to do six. I didn't want to do two. <laughs> you didn't want to do two? Yeah. If Sylvester uh, decides to do another one, would you be a part of it? Of course. How could they do without me? How ridiculous did you think the robot was in Rocky IV? And did anyone try to talk any sense into Sylvester? No. It was (laughs) his idea. He wrote everything. Did you think it was crazy when that robot came out? I thought it was funny. (laughs) Yeah, I thought it was funny. What kind of guy was Rodney Dangerfield off off camera? Very nice. A little jumper, a little nervous. But he was a nice man. Yeah? Are you a millionaire just from the Rocky movies alone? I've been a couple of times. <laughs> All right. Now, dude, do you want to play a Matt Wazell game? Yes, I always want to play a Matt Wazell game. All right, let me go through this. Matt Wazell. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's see. Which one looks good? Day of the Dead versus Zombie? It's another one. Pick your poison. I don't know. I think I think we already did that. Could, no, we did Friday four versus um, or Friday three versus something four. <clears throat> Halloween four versus nobody gets out alive. Want to do that? Yes. All right. Let's play that game. Okay, guys. Here's your choices. First one is from Halloween four. 
when Kelly Meeker gets a shotgun impalement. The most laughable use of a shotgun to be impaled with. Up against <laughs> the sledgehammer death in Nobody Gets Out Alive, a.k.a. Down the Road. You guys decide. How do you want to die? Well, my answer is, is old age, but I'll go with one of these. <laughs> yeah, you gotta pick one of Matt's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you ever see, uh, you probably didn't, it's so obscure. If anyone's into classic horror, Abbott and Costello, you know, they did all those We Meet the Monster movies. Right. Well, one of them was called Abbott and Costello Meet the Killer, and the killer was Boris Karloff, and he was hypnotizing Costello to, uh, to hang himself. He was like, take that rope and put it around your neck. And then uh, he went to do it, and he, he was falling off the bed, and he, hold, he held onto the rope, and it actually pulled off. He was so fat that it pulled off the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so he kept trying to kill him. And he, he made him put a gun to his head and pull the trigger, but I don't know if there was nothing in the gun. I, f- I forget what it was, dude. But So he goes, this is very difficult. Okay, how would you like to die? And he goes, old age. <laughs> and he goes, this isn't going to work. <laughs> so that's where I got that from. So, Perfect. do you remember the sledgehammer kill and nobody get, uh, what's it called? Nobody gets out alive? Yeah, yeah. Okay, what, how exactly does that happen? Uh, isn't that the one, um... With the sledgehammer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but is that the one where the dude's in the chair? Uh, I thought it was... Maybe we shouldn't play this game right now. <sighs> I thought it was the one up against the tree, dude. I don't know. I could... You know what, Matt? We're gonna have to go for another one of yours. <laughs> uh, no offense to that movie. It's a cool movie. I just I just don't remember. Alright. I only watched it once, I think. <clears throat> okay, he has one that says pick your poison. I don't know if that's an intro for this show or not. Let's just play that one and see. What's up, Skeleton Crew Boneheads? It's your friend Matt here. I'm coming to you today not for fun, not for laughs, not for chitty chat, not for motorboating, not even to drink. I'm coming to you today because I want you guys to choose how you're going to die. Everybody's going to die someday, even Skeleton Crew Boners like yourselves. And Well, shit, you guys may be dead already. I mean, you're talking skeletons. How does how does that work? Are you guys like souls who possess skeletons? Did you tear your own skin off? <laughs> oh boy, this kind of ruins my little game here. <laughs> moving on. So, uh, hey, stole your moving on. <laughs> boy, he's gonna be so pissed. Can you imagine when we played this game the first time and we didn't play this intro? This guy sat there, produced this whole thing, and he's like, "Where the hell's my intro?" I just didn't realize that. I didn't know that this was the intro, but here we go. That music um, was awesome. I know. <laughs> I'm going to present to you guys two gruesome deaths, and I want you to choose how you're going to kick the bucket in something I like to call pick, 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 your, 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 your poison, poison, <laughs> echo, echo, scary effects. Ah. Oh, boy, he hates me. I can't believe I didn't get 20 texts where the hell was my intro the first time you did this. Uh, I just dropped the ball. I'm sorry, Matt. All right, here's another one. He has teeth versus hostile. I think I know those. I think I know where this is going, so we could do this one. Here we go. Okay, guys, here's your choices, both from two movies from 2007. Oh, no. And in all actuality, I don't think we see these people actually die on screen. But I would believe that you would not survive this, nor would you actually want to keep living. The first one is from Teeth, and that's the Vagina with Teeth movie. Yes, you should see that. And that's where the boy gets his wiener ripped off by a Vagina with Teeth. Brilliant, brilliant movie. Up against Hostile 2, and that's when Stewart gets his wiener cut off at the end. Like I said, I don't think either of them two died, but who really wants to live after that? I don't know how Jamie will vote on this one, but hey, you guys decide. How do you want to die? How perfect that Jamie couldn't make it today. 
<laughs> I know, right? <laughs> that that's is a, perfect. That's a great fucking question, though. Have you ever seen Teeth, dude? Another meant to be moment on the show. Exactly. Uh, seen Teeth? No, but I do have it. I heard of it, and I know what the deal is. So, yeah, that, yeah. You don't need that that much of a description. It's no. a dude getting his dick ripped off by a vagina with teeth. Yeah. All right. <laughs> how how would you want to die if you could pick oh, one of those two? Ah, dude, I that's tough. I you come back to me? Just give me a second. I I don't even I, know, dude. I got an easy easy answer. Both are so ruthless, dude. But here's the thing, dude. Teeth is the way to go because at least you're getting laid before you die. <laughs> Very true. Yeah, is that the way everyone wants to go? If a bomb is, you know, a nuclear bomb, warhead's coming down, you got like three minutes to go, don't you just grab the nearest chick and just start, you know, saying, hey, uh, real quick, I swear this, I'll be done in three minutes, don't worry about it. Yeah, that, yeah that's a good point, dude. That's a very good point. Uh, yeah, I gotta say that, as opposed to sitting in a fucking cold, dank room, being chained to a fucking chair, getting your, getting your dick cut off. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely, I'm yeah. with you. He got laid, and he might have gotten a blowjob before that. You think he came? Huh. I don't know. I didn't see the movie. It was the girl hot that he banged? Does that, yeah. Does this, fa- yes. But does this factor into it? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, because he didn't get to come? Does oh. That- <laughs> well, I enjoy sex the whole time. So, whether or not I, I have that moment is uh, really irrelevant. You, you'd rather still go out fucking without without busting a nut fucking with, with just just being in there just being in the game just happy to play oh dude if I could wow that one second yeah if I could do it at that second die then that'd be cool you know what I'm with you yep so yeah the teeth the, the teeth kill wins we go with the teeth kill let me just look at this chick real quick just fucked up to even say but yeah is her name Michelle Leitenstein no I don't know if I'm looking at the right poster here. Is it a blonde girl? Yes. Okay. Teeth. I picked teeth. <laughs> she's she's definitely cute enough, man. We have a winner. Wow, yeah. Hey, can I go that way? Yep, yep, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Do we actually have a choice? Is there a sequel being made soon? Did you ever hear the, the old thing, uh, would you cut your, you know, pinky off... If you could get to bang J Lo or something like that, or you know, would you bang Pamela Anderson if you knew that you were still going to get hepatitis C? <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> no, she's not worth it. And that's a given, too, by the way. Well, she's still alive. <laughs> Is she? Yeah. Wow, syphilis didn't get her. <laughs> <laughs> I figured it would it would mass quantify on her body and it would just take over and kill her. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I wouldn't fuck her with a ten foot pole and you pushing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What up, bitches? This is the fucking ghoul, and you're listening to the fucking skeleton crew, son. All right, guys. Here it is. VHS two. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. This came out June 6, 2013, and here you are getting a review on June 21st, the start of summer. Let's kick the summer off. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have a budget, and that's uh, that's a shame. It's good to put it in perspective, and the thing is, I always heard that some people say to me, for example, I was talking to Jason Lloyd. Jason Lloyd. And he was talking about uh, ABC's The Death. You guys seen that? Yes. You did? Okay. Huh. He, <clears throat> he was saying to me, you know, you could tell story G, E, and F or something like that. Just took the money <laughs> and basically pocketed it and just shot like the most piece of crap, low budget, you know, garbage. Right. You know, so there's a, there's a budget and it means something and it means a lot more. When you divide that budget amongst four di- or, or five directors, because uh-huh. you got the four stories and then you got the wraparound, the reach around. <laughs> <laughs> From here on forth, it will be referred to as the reach around. Yes, it will. I will not forget that. <laughs> so, uh, okay, it's not like when we reviewed VHS, so we have to do a non-spoiler review for a first so on so minutes. So let's talk about each story. Let's name each story. Name them. 
and then say what we think about them, and then we'll give an overall thought. I want to name the first one Todd. <laughs> You're so <laughs> literal, Jamie. I love that about you. <laughs> so the reach around story <laughs> is that there's a <laughs> there's a missing high school student. Oh yeah, first let's give the opening scene because that's even better. Oh yeah, that's great. <laughs> oh god. This dude, his job is to basically videotape. He's a private investigator. The opening scene is this guy goes to a motel where this guy brings in this smoking hot chick. Great tit. The first thing you see is she takes her top off. Oh my god. And you don't know what's going on either. You think maybe it's a fucking pervert. And then... Dude, do you care at that point? <laughs> no, no, but then you find out that he is. Uh, Actually, he... I wasn't thinking anything because as soon as we saw it, I just Boobs. said. Boobs! Boobs! <laughs> which is the, uh, which is the had, alert? I, I have to. such a nice ride. I have to yell out the boob alert. So, the boob, no, no, boobes, the boobes. Boobes, or, or tits, or whatever I end up saying, but, you know, for anyone in my house, and then everyone comes running. Oh, <laughs> uh, I, I gave it the old Wayne's World, shawing! <laughs> Those were perfect. Yeah, they were beautiful, they really were, I have to say. God, that, that's why I want to, see, I want to become friends with Adam Green, so that he could hook me up. And put me in his movies, and I'll be that random guy who just grabs her tits. You never, dude. You got to check out the videos that his wife's in online, dude. She does all these fucking uh, crazy videos. She's part of some team. Adam Smoke Green's and wife. Pop. Yeah, Adam Green. Yeah. Yeah. Smoke out. Yeah, they're pretty popular too. Link me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's the opening scene. So uh, then these guys head off, and they go to a house, and the reach around story is that. There's a missing high school student, and he's in this house, which appears to be... I thought he was a college kid. Oh, college? Okay. He appears... I'm sorry. What grade is he in, Jamie? <laughs> <laughs> I'm he's sorry. I'm, just, I'm, I'm kidding. Accurate. I'm kidding. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> they appear, He appears to hang out in the same house from part one. Am I wrong, or do they just... Two people just have a lot of tapes laying around in 2013. I can't, uh, well, it didn't really look like the same house to me. And 14 TVs all playing static. <laughs> but there's a, there, there's a lot of TVs. There's a lot of TVs, yeah. <laughs> white noise. <laughs> it's always white noise. Like, But that, you gotta admit, that does set the tone. And there's, a, yeah, there's always a lamp, like, right over the fucking, <laughs> like, in between all the TVs stacked on each other, there's a lamp. It's like, what the fuck, yo? <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's okay, let's give it that that non-spoiler review. Okay. So the first story is about a guy. We we can say all this stuff. Is about a guy who gets surgery done because one of his eyes were damaged in a car accident, and he gets like an electronic eye. Bionic oh, eye. A bionic oh, eye. Like Universal Soldier. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like the Terminator. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> and actually, Dan, the very funny you say Terminator, because that comes up at the end of that. He gets this bionic eye, and luckily for us, it sees ghosts. Oh Don't my believe God. it's good. When he sees things with that eye, it picks up, you know, the wavelength that you'd normally don't pick up with your normal eye. Mm -hmm. So that's that story. Well, and it's like a, a, uh, the scientists are recording it as well because it's a new fucking thing. And at one point he sees tits and he's like, I want that video, scientists. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, wait. Okay. Hey, he's you like, scientists, Don't watch assholes. I want that footage. <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing. Without, see, I'm trying not to do spoilers. Okay, but still, why did he say that? Do they hear out of that eye? Like, is there an <laughs> audio recording going on too? Must Maybe be. they can read lips. Oh, okay. They, yeah, they they have Lou Ferrigno as a scientist back. Then. What I thought was funny was like when he, when in the very beginning when he's talking to the doctor about having the eye, and then uh, the, he's like, "Well, what about if I need some private time?" And he's like, "You're just gonna watch me go to the bathroom or whatever." And he's like, "Yeah." Uh, he's like, "You could just read a newspaper during." <laughs> and I'm like, "What? Just close yeah, right. your eyes, motherfucker." You know, he wants some private time. Close your eyes. Put on an eye patch. Wear some sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> there are all kinds of ways around this. Yeah, an eye patch. In all fairness, how when he keeps looking at the toilet paper, see when there's not shit on it. How... <laughs> <laughs> you have to know when you're done he wiping. Just use his finger. Oh. <laughs> Dig it out like a trout. Shit just got weird. 
What do you guys, yeah, exactly. What do you guys rate this story? <laughs> what do you guys rate, well, uh, we don't have to rate each story. I thought that one sucked my ass. Did you really? I hated I liked that. it. I hated it, dude. Fuck that shit. I liked it. I'm going to outright say I like this a lot more than the first one. Yeah, it would. <laughs> we do have bionic body parts now. Right. And this is something, I think actually the eye is something that has been tested before. But I, um, or at least a concept. Yeah, but it can't send messages to your, to I, your well, brain. Well, no. Yeah, um, not, not even that, though. It's the fact that it's just such a stretch that they're using that as the gag in, in order <laughs> to tell a story. It's like, it's just like. I thought it was a wait, 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 Dan. I'll give you this. That should happen in part five. You're right. Like, they're, they're going really far in part two. <laughs> um, well, I don't know. I think it was clever and, and original. And I also awesome. thought this particular story was pretty fucking scary. Mm. Um, there were several times when I was, like, climbing up the sofa. And, yeah, uh, there was some good days. I, I was like, oh. <laughs> I mean, seriously. You guys, you guys want to watch a movie with me when I get scared because you would have a blast. <laughs> there was some scary parts in this movie. Yeah. Right, dude. Yeah. I do have a, a what the fuck, though. Okay. And I know that's usually for retrospectives, but he gets a visitor. <laughs> yeah. At 7 o'clock in the morning. Right. Who then asks for a beer. The next time, and they're There's having. nothing wrong with that. What's what the fuck about that? No, nothing. Uh, Don't they're having a conversation. <laughs> A little while later, still drinking the same beer. It's dark outside. Okay, fine. Maybe you're right. Well, how do you know it's the same beer, though, Jamie? Well, because they were in the same conversation. I mean, she didn't. They didn't progress in the conversation. So, wait, wait. What you're saying is it's not about the beer. You're saying that they started talking. Continuity error. It has, no, it has nothing to do with the beer. It's just that it starts at seven o'clock in the morning, and then it's dark outside. <laughs> and she's and and just then she breaks it to him about blah blah blah. Yeah. Okay, well then you're right. And and what the fuck though? He doesn't let her in initially. Shit, like a hot girl at your doorstep. He's like, uh, I don't know. You please go away. Like well, what? Because she freaking followed him from the hospital. That's Who kind of cares? Funny. Look she at her. Call me any day. So. Exactly. Look at her. Who gives a shit why she's there? It's, you guys, uh, we can't die. get it. Jamie, <laughs> <Come on now. laughs> like you don't know us. Come on. Yeah, you know, really. Well, what if I were to say that though? Like you know, oh, this guy—he's at my door. He followed me from. A work. guy is different. Guys are creepy. He's what? But he's good looking, so I'll let him in. Yeah, that's smart. You know. <laughs> uh, good looking guys cannot be killers. Christian Bale taught us that in American Psycho. That he did. It's true. <laughs> and so did Norman Bates. Always trust the good looking guys. Exactly. That's why I trust you guys. That's so yeah. weird. I was listening to you. We were listening to the news today. <laughs> <laughs> Another meant to be skeleton crew moment. <gasps> yeah. All right. Story two. A guy is on a bike. He's a bike rider loser. <laughs> and he straps a camera to his helmet. Because, you know, that'll be like compelling shit when he gets home and he watches that. Okay, babe. Love yeah, ya. but apparently he'd rather do that than nail his girlfriend. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my right? God. Can we? I'm going to play a clip right here. Is this the most inane conversation if I knew what the word inane <laughs> means? All I know is it's stupid. <laughs> like, listen to this conversation. Tell me this is not the worst writing you've ever heard in your life. Or acting. I don't know. Here you go. Acting's pretty bad. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Me and Mike Sullivan. We're supposed to be having breakfast. Yeah, but it's a beautiful day. I just want to take the bike out for a spin. I wanted you to take me for a spin. You know, you ride that bike more than you ride me. Yeah, but you know the bike is just a physical thing, babe. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now tell me you love me. I love you. <sighs> okay, good enough. Be safe, babe. All right, bye. Is this for real? Like, I... At that point, are you both saying to yourself, okay, who directed this? Who wrote this? At this point, I'm like, why did Alex say this movie was good? <laughs> he gets bitten by a zombie and turns into a zombie, mm -hmm. and that's that. Now, uh, somebody on our Facebook said this, and it is absolutely true. There are no more zombie movies out there. There are just infected movies, mm -hmm. and that's it. There are, like, zombies... Uh are dead people who crawl out of a grave. And I feel like in the last 10 years, Dan and Jamie, all we really see are infected movies. Is that no, not right? Oh, no. Really? Okay, give me an example of a real zombie. Because infected people aren't dead. 
like in like in what the fuck is the name of that movie? Twenty-eight, 28 days, days later, they're not dead, but they are infected. But like he, for instance, the guy in this movie was dead. He had to die first and then come back. No, no, the no. They just puke first. No, then, then they, they die. Yeah, they they, the couple, the couple on bikes came up to him, checked his pulse. There was no pulse. They called the cops because he was dead. And then he comes back. Well, so he was fucking dead. It's a zombie. Yeah, but okay. So zombies <laughs> apparently in this movie have a conscience and can pick up their phone. Nah, <laughs> And <laughs> I think what happened things. that is oh, but that's going to be a spoiler though. Shit. Oh shit! Okay, yeah, yeah. That's bad, okay, okay, bad. okay, Sorry. okay. No, that's fine. All right. <laughs> so that's what happens. Uh, we'll get to that in the spoiler section. Hopefully, you guys seen this. And if you haven't, and you just don't give a shit, then keep listening when we tell you there's spoilers. Okay, what do you guys think of this one? Good, bad, or what? I think this is a two out of five. I don't dig zombies to begin with. I'll be honest with you. Even though Return of the Living Dead is in my top five favorite horror movies in history, I just don't like zombie movies that much. So uh, that weighs heavily, I guess, for me. What do you guys think? Yeah. Well, I thought this one, again, I thought it was original. Mm. Uh, however, there was some really bad acting in here. I mean, real bad. <laughs> really <laughs> bad. Um, and, uh, and actually, I'll tell you how bad it was. There was a, I made a movie... <laughs> About ten years ago, called uh, <laughs> called um, the fuck's it called? Um, I don't know. You made it. I know. It don't matter unless it's on YouTube. So let's just anyway. Wait, wait. So I made this movie several years ago, uh, and was one it of Camp my friends, Nightmare? One of my friends was acting in this movie, and he was just terrible. And it was, but he ended up ad libbing most of his stuff. And okay. just I didn't tell him to, but that's just what he did. Um, hey, asshole! Stick to the script. The girl on the on the bike that shows up with the tits. Yes, that is how she was acting. I mean, it's like I don't think I don't know if she had a script or if she just right. ignored it or right. if I don't know. But it was bad. Just be yourself. Um, overall, though, I thought there was some um, pretty. There was some decent gore. Yes. In that in that segment, I agree. and you know there were some funny moments. Um, it was kind of comical in places. So, no, you know, it was okay. It was not my favorite, but it was okay. I thought it pretty much uh, sucked. but yeah, Excellent, it was okay. I knew I could depend on you. But Jamie made a good point, which I wanted to say earlier, too, or at least co-signed to what the shit she's saying, is I'll give him credit for, for originality and shit. I, I definitely, I definitely, like... Zombies are not original. I don't give him yes, anything. they're not, but this, done Zombie. this way, you have never seen this before. What does that mean? What does that mean? We've never seen, what, a bike riding zombie? No, You've never not... seen a zombie. POV? Oh my god! Yeah, a zombie POV. You've never it seen cool. that. Oh, I get it. okay. Fine. Oh, and come on! I mean, it was hilarious. Like when he's like biting, like he tries to eat the wallet, and he's like, Bleh! you know, and then <laughs> like he has no, he eats himself. Like he has no idea. He's a shitty right. zombie. Like this guy does not know how to be a zombie. You know. Right. <laughs> I want to ask you guys this: How come zombies never attack each other? Because they don't eat dead flesh. Yeah, but okay. What is the? You know how. You, do you ever hear the old gag, would you, like, you know how Matt gives us the Matt Wazell game, and it's would you rather? Yes. How about if somebody said, okay, I'm going to give, because Jamie, girls are different. Dan, would you rather have sex with your mother, or? I would like to pass to Jamie. <laughs> okay, or Jessica Alba, 10 minutes after she died. Oh, you sick motherfucker. She'd still be warm. Oh. But, but here's my point in this. You don't have to answer, Dan. It's fine. Here's the point. At what limit does a zombie know whether or not he's eating another zombie? How uh, does a zombie pick up his phone? <laughs> he he didn't. He butt-dialed her. He picked it up he after. Didn't, he didn't answer the phone. He accidentally called her. Yeah, and then he picked it up. <laughs> no, but here's the question, though. How does a zombie... Dis when does he make the distinction on, well, you got bitten by another zombie, so when do I stop wanting to eat you? When their flesh is cold, when it's longer... You're going to tell me this asshole's flesh was cold... Because he threw up, dropped dead for five seconds, and got back he up. He tried to eat himself, though so obviously. So why didn't anyone else want to eat him? Because <laughs> there was, I don't know, better stuff. 
Okay, so I'm saying <laughs> I don't like what I'm trying to say here is I don't like that either. Like it's how true. zombies don't attack each other, and that's what I liked about that movie, Warm Bodies. Where did you see that? No, but I saw the commercial where the <laughs> <laughs> where the guy. <laughs> Now, listen, here's why. This is legit. This is legit. Where the guy said to the girl, he said, act dead. And then she just walked around like, and he goes, not so dead. So that's what I'm trying to say. It, it's ridiculous that you could just act dead in, in front of zombies and they won't eat you. Like, where is the true instinctual... That is that is for comedic purposes. If you watch The Walking Dead, in order for them to to blend in with other zombies, they have to cover themselves in zombie guts. I mean, like yes. they have to smell of stinking flesh. Do you think? And, I'm sorry, what? Jamie. Do you think The Walking Dead's like pretty much the modern day gospel? As far yeah, as the- I mean, close to it. I mean, it's. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Fuck this though. This one it was okay. It was cool with it in a few shots. I like how they crashed a kid's birthday party. <laughs> 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 Little fucking kid. Yay! <laughs> like, come on, dude. That shit's hilarious, dude. Every time you see it was little kids early in birthday, for a birthday party. party. They were he was supposed to be having breakfast sex with his girlfriend when he went on his bike ride and then they're crashing a kid's birthday party. Who the hell has a birthday party in the park? At, like, yeah. In the morning? Good point. <laughs> Who does that? Who has time? Yeah, have you uh, noticed? I pay attention to time a lot. That's <laughs> yeah. Jamie's two observations so far is what time it is. Eighteen minutes in sixteen seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right. So no, no, nobody likes that third, the second story. All right. I'll give it. I'll give it. Four. It's okay. I don't hate it. Okay. Third story. How, Jamie is the most intelligent one on the show, as <laughs> as we observed so far. So. <laughs> You guys are in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, please give a uh, overall synopsis with no spoilers of what exactly we're getting into in the third story. I would say that it's it's a, a, a covenant, a convent of uh, cult? A, a cult of it's a, a cult. guy yes. who <laughs> doesn't believe that this life is that important because there's another life, which is paradise ahead of him. So you go ahead. That's all I have. It's well. It's basically it's sort of like a mishmash of Jim Jones, um, mostly Jim Jones, but then there are other like um, the Branch Divinity people. Um, they were kind of pulling just a lot of different cult things from a lot of different stories, and so yeah, what you have here is a cult leader who they live on a commune, and these this film crew wants to come and give a quote unbiased opinion about how they live it just so happens that they decide to do their filming on the day yeah the day where <laughs> everything takes place now i don't i think that we shouldn't even say anything let's save this for the real review <laughs> i can't okay, even talk fine. about this without the spoiler dude exactly that's I what i'm saying i, I just, just want to blurt it out so bad but can we just move on what else could you say besides spoilers nothing all right <laughs> okay what do you guys give this the uh the third story jamie said that's all you're getting out of this until until you watch this movie and then you'll get to hear this their spoiler so uh, I give this a four out of five. I really like this. This is clearly the high point in this movie. Four. Good, Dan. <laughs> I <laughs> I gave this a five because <laughs> just because I was dying to fucking see it at the oh fuck. Let's move on. I give it a five. God damn. Good it. five out of five. That means Dan loved it. <laughs> it was just so amusing to me, but I, I can't I can't tell you how much I appreciated that at the end. Yes. Oh, uh, dude, <laughs> I, I laughed for fucking the whole time. But, uh, <laughs> okay, I didn't expect that. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. This one also had some nice creepy moments, I yes. think. Uh, oh, some yeah. Some really good. I'm actually, there were several times when I was climbing the sofa again on this one. I mean, I was just like, whoa, and uh, which I was impressed with because I didn't expect that from this movie. Oh, oh God, I know. I didn't like, I really didn't like one part with the, uh, with the, with just the, the little guy, the little Chinese guy, the head guy. I didn't like any of those scenes, even though. With was, him? Really? Yeah, like I thought it was all just like exaggerated. Like that guy's so small. I'll fucking toss that dude across the room, dude. And I'm not even that strong. But I'm just saying, like. Yeah, how did that, he become the main guy? 
Yeah, but like I, I, I just wanted to make this clear. Like the whole segment, it's whatever. Like I thought it was weird at some parts, kind of boring, whatever, whatever. And but there were some creepy moments which we can't get into. But there's one fucking really strong fucking image when they walk into a room and they see. A oh my god! Light, and I think it's in the trailer. But I know anyway. exactly, dude. Okay, that's where I was gonna go with this one. Before we even get to spoilers, that scene you're talking about is in the trailer, yes. and so is okay. On Horrorbid, I posted, and I'm sorry, Jesus, it, had I known it would impact the movie, I, I even though it's a good story, I guess, I wouldn't have posted it. Um, What'd you do? Did you guys see the, the one, or what was it called, the three minutes from VHS 2? Yeah, I remember seeing it, yeah. Yeah, and they give away the, the freaking... I know. Like, Jesus Christ, man. Yeah. Why would you release that? <laughs> But, see, that's the thing with that, though. Like, I was expecting it to get a little crazier after that, and it did. But that ending, dude, like, I, I seriously laughed so hard just because... Oh, yeah. Oh, the ending is laughable. There's just one shot, dude, of, <laughs> of him coming down the hallway, and it's just so fucking hilarious. I had to rewind this. Now, thing. that I don't know what you're talking about. You'll get any, because you have to get into specifics there when you when we do it. The, uh, I can't say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah, yeah. Save, it, save it, save it, save it. All right. Uh, <laughs> That's what she said. Oh, <laughs> you motherfucker! I'm I'm about to pop off. Hold on. Oh shit. Okay. <sighs> the four. Wait, I said fourth story. I'm sorry, guys. Did I say that already. I meant third. That was the third. Maybe even four. <laughs> the uh. By the way, the wraparound at this point is not really going anywhere. The what, Alex? The roots around. All right, the reach around is not going anywhere just yet. The girl had a nosebleed, yada yada. She passed out, whatever. So, story number four is my one of my favorite subjects. Guys, I'll admit to you right now. I love aliens. I love Bigfoot. I love ghosts. Yep. So, this movie struck... Big feet! <laughs> yeah. This, <laughs> this movie struck two of the three for me. And I'll say they did the aliens one the best yes uh, hold on uh, the burp that oh god i just threw up in my mouth hold on <clears throat> okay that's so sexy it is because it didn't come up to the point where it hit my taste buds I think I just hey can't. guys would you hate me if i fucking do a coffee refill please don't hate me absolutely i, I hated you before you got on dude i'll be a minute and a half time that's what she said oh <laughs> fuck you both i'm out i'll be right back oh boy this guy's leaving the dungeon he's going down the hallway do you know what's down that hallway rats syringe needles rats. <laughs> uh, whatever dan okay if you're willing to go down there for coffee Take me with you you do realize I put the coffee pot uh, amongst all the booby traps. So I don't know if it'll be coming back. Boobas, but... The booba traps. The, bo- the booba z traps. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> this one is about space aliens, and I love space aliens. As opposed to illegal aliens. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did make it harder for me to get a job. Oh. This is in, like I said, to Adam Green himself. This is Intensity in 10 Cities. I forgot who said it. I think it was Matt Wiesel. He said that the reason he likes found footage and stuff like that, and which is why they do it, is because it's more realistic. I really liked it. I thought that the the relationships between all the people were completely believable and totally realistic. Yes. I mean, the the sister and her boyfriend and her friends and, and her little brothers friends they all acted exactly like they would act i mean it was perfectly natural i mean who didn't piss in water balloons when they were oh dude that was an awesome sleepover (laughs) yeah you know what i used to do i used to piss into a two liter bottle of soda and i would just keep pissing in it throughout the day and i would purposely drink extra coca-cola or whatever i was doing at the time and i would just keep pissing in it then I would put a balloon at the end of – I would put it to the top, and I put it upside down so the water pressure fills the balloon out. Then I would you know, snap it off and tie it up and throw it at people. Now, see, what's hilarious is while I'm watching this movie, I was watching this with Jen, and we're watching it, and she's like, ah, he's, <laughs> he's pissing in the water balloon. And I was like, why did I never think of that? 
<laughs> you never <laughs> thought of that? That was my whole childhood. Of course, Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> that was my childhood. It'll be a little bit difficult for me to do it. <laughs> Dude, do you know how much more people laugh when you get hit by a water balloon filled with piss as opposed to water? Yeah, what's that smell sets in? The laughing ratio, the meters are off the charts. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. They love it. They love it. Especially when the person doesn't even realize it. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm getting a little personal. <laughs> you know, you're in a sterile. So... <laughs> <laughs> so what do we give the aliens one? I give this a four out of five. I really liked it. Give it a four. Dan? Honestly, I I have to factor in somewhat of a spoiler here. I I would have given it a five. I loved it so much. Good. You killed the fucking dog at the end. You get nothing in life. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's move the fuck on. No, I totally agree, Dan. That broke my heart. Like Don't I had to fucking yeah. there. Let's I, move I on. had fuck to look segment. away. I did. I had to look away, and I almost cried. So bullshit, there. dude. Bullshit. That dog lives and walks away happy. <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you, I didn't, you know what I didn't like about it? The little art when he hit the ground. Oh, that actually, fuck, Jamie, Jamie, that went straight stop. through my heart. It did. It, it went straight through my heart. You know it what? Would have got a five. You get nothing. Fuck you. And I just want to say that Paul did live. J he saved Ginny, and Jason did not kill Paul. I want to say that too. And he's still alive today. Oh, there's someone in here with us. There's someone in this fucking room. <laughs> All right. All right. We're done. With the non-spoilers, if you haven't seen this tough shit, turn us the fuck off! <laughs> yeah. No, listen to us anyway, because we're probably more fun than watching any movie. Yeah, aren't we? You guys are, I just sort of... You're just there. I don't know, I'm just <laughs> Yeah, right, you're my favorite part of the show. I hate you guys. We're in the spoiler section here. Okay, now guys, I'll say this right away, I should have said this in the beginning, but oh well. Okay, all our jokes are out the window. The things that, or I, what I said, in, the, in uh, the first VHS movie that, oh, by the way, VHS Part 1 was 2012. This is 2013. They're going back to back to back, Friday the 13th style. That's awesome. Yatch. Now, what I said, the jokes I made about VHS was that clearly these are computer files. No way on earth is this going to be on VHS. They don't tape Skype conversations on VHS. Clearly, that is not mm, what's going on here. Now, Jason Lloyd told me, and, and I think it was in the commentary of VHS, he said, <clears throat> obviously what's happening here is that, yes, these are computer files. They were burned on DVD, transferred to VHS, and sold on a black market so that they're untraceable. So that is the answer. And uh. it is silly. <laughs> so he silly. said the same thing to me and I'm still calling bullshit because who in the hell who is who gonna does? go from DVD to VHS and then sell it and who's gonna buy it it doesn't it doesn't make any sense so yeah how do you advertise this on Craigslist yeah that's what no. I mean everything in this movie like, is a okay, fucking okay you depraved sons of bitches I got some shit for you but you gotta have a VCR <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> and I mean I, I have a VCR but you know, everyone doesn't these I days. I got one. Yeah. Uh, we all do, but we're movie fucking. What are you more shocked with? People who tell you they still have a VCR or people who tell you they still don't have Blu-ray player? More shocked? What's more shocking? Well, I don't think either of them are shocking, really. They're in the middle still. You yeah. know why? Because there's that middle thing, that DVD thing. So DVD. Yeah. We gotta wait till there's something besides Blu-rays to be shocked at VHS. <laughs> 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 so we'll we'll just go with that. Okay. Yeah. So like we said, the first story, a dude, his eye is injured. He gets a robot eyeball or whatever, and it records everything that's happening so they could test it out to see if this we're gonna continue with this, and. Um, now, here's the thing. He sees ghosts with his eye. It's something that we don't pick up, sort of like EVP or MVP. What, EVP, right? EVP. MVP. He picks up ghosts and he sees them. Now, here's the problem I have with this right away. The, uh, the, the thing he was cooking his hot, he was boiling his... Kettle? <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> here it is. Here, here's the problem. His controller for the video game disappears. Then you hear the pot fall. Now, it appears to me, Sherlock Holmes, that yeah. this was his first ghost experience because he wasn't used to the idea of shit disappearing. Now, you're telling me that just because he has a robot eye <laughs> that suddenly ghosts start haunting his house? Bullshit! There's no way that that would start. Well, he would start seeing them, but yes. it wouldn't start happening now. Perhaps... They only started because they knew he was aware. Because, you know, like, at the, when he pulls the eye out, they, the dude makes him put it back in. And he's like, no, you're going to fucking look at us. No, 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 bullshit, because they don't know he's aware because he doesn't know he's aware at this point. How could they know if he doesn't know? They're ghosts. They know lots of stuff. I get out of here. <laughs> dude, I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't know. I'm, I don't know. That's what I'm, I'm saying. I'm going to stop trying to bullshit on that one. I don't know. And I want to say real quick before we get into this, uh, the eye was way too zoomed in. Uh, a human vision is uh, much better than that. I think. Wait, let me see. I'm going to close one of my eyes. No, I guess this is it. Okay, never mind. Camera one, camera two. Camera, <laughs> camera two. Another <laughs> Wayne's World reference. <laughs> All right, Dan, let's get into that. I like what you were saying, Dan. This chick's ringing your doorbell. You look in your little peephole. Are you really going to argue with her to come in here? He's a fucking idiot. <laughs> I'm calling bullshit right there. It lost me there. Yeah, you lost me there. Now, wait. Now, th 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 this is Dan's kind of girl. What does she ask for as soon as she gets in there? A beer. And? Uh, I don't know. Painkillers. Killers. Oh, pain killers. <laughs> and then she's like, Oh, well, then I'll just take a beer. Well, bitch, I didn't offer you anything. <laughs> That's right, yeah, because she knew he got him. Wow, dude, she was tracking that shit. She was like, well, the doctor gave you painkillers, right? Yeah, and he's like, well, it really doesn't hurt to have a robot eye. <laughs> and, and, <I'm... laughs> and then, well, what is it? She's like, uh, the, and then the whole thing to get rid of the ghosts is to fuck her. She's yeah, like, look at that, this. Okay, like, that look was at a little, that's a little bit, that's a little bit far-fetched. I mean, you know, uh, like, I don't know, Jamie, if you have a, listen, Jamie, <laughs> I have a, I, I have an uncle who's a ghost, Jamie, so really quick, let's get rid of him. Well, I would totally help you. I'm just <laughs> saying that, I'm, but I don't, I don't believe it'd work. <laughs> but I'm going to start using that line, actually. There's no harm in trying. <laughs> and hey, I know you guys, um, I know you guys like the, or don't like some of the shit in Insidious, like, um, you know, with the kids and stuff like that. I know some of it, I don't, I'm not sure, I forget. What I fucking love Insidious. Though. Okay, okay. All right, yeah, but uh, I'm so sick of fucking little kids popping up, though. And it was a little <laughs> effective in it, but it was fucking everywhere, and it's like, really, dude? Whoa, whoa, really? Dan, Dan, you gave Sinister a 10. Sinister was fucking badass, dude. This was just so repetitive, dude. It was just like boom, boom, boom. And that was scary. And it, it, all right, I'm not going to lie. A couple of them were shocking. But just like with the fucking aliens one, the only reason that was shocking is because you could see. And it was so fucking loud. <laughs> like what? No, it's like the oh. aliens had dial up. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I could believe that that happened when the ship landed. I could believe it sent out a signal. But how come that loud noise happened every time they attack somebody? You well, got mail. Uh, there's another movie, and I'm trying to place what it was while I was watching this, but there's another alien movie where you hear the, like, in the background, and I can't think of what the hell it was, but it sounded exactly like that. Yeah? Was this it? also reminded me of Signs, because the aliens looked exactly like the aliens from Signs. Of course what aliens look like, though. And um, uh, the house reminded me uh, because they were in the house they were in. That whole segment screamed paranormal activity to me. Right, right, right. I didn't get that, but okay, I, I see just that. Just the feel of it. I mean, I'm you know not that not what was happening or anything, yeah. but just the, you know where they were and the feel of it. I just it just felt the same. Yeah. So uh, wait, or, oh wait, we're at the first story still. I'm sorry. Oh yeah. <laughs> that aliens is so compelling. We can't get away from it. But, uh, okay, so, uh, so this chick comes in his house, and she has ghost ears instead of eyes. And she could hear ghosts. <laughs> and, uh, that's stupid. That's kind of stupid. I admit she that's stupid. She has ghost ears instead of eyes. But the thing is, dude, you're so serious. Like, that's exactly what it is. That's what we're dealing with. Yeah. Put them together, they're like the paranormal yeah. Helen Keller. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> see no evil, hear no evil. They're like, fucking, uh, what's his name? What are they, what's that comedian's name with, who set himself on fire? Richard Pryor. Oh, Gene Wilder. Yeah. <laughs> you ever see that movie? 
Which one? One's blind and one is deaf. <laughs> oh, it's fucking fantastic. It's one of the classics, dude. <laughs> that's, that's, what this, that's what this is. <laughs> yeah. It's just so stupid, though, but think about it. Like, that's how you defeat them is to fuck. <laughs> and that's it, dude. And that's it, because after after the fact, okay, and we bring up the Terminator thing where, uh, you know, obviously we're into spoilers, so he rips out his eye. That was cool. Or <laughs> Yeah, okay. just like, I thought he was going to do a Terminator moment, dude, where he looks in the mirror, like, and it's a rubber face, like Terminator. <laughs> I'm glad you say rubber, because I'm going to reference that in a later thing. Okay, anyways, um... Yeah, this story pretty much for the like most. Like you ever reference rubbers? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> you'll see. It'll come full circle. It's this is the one. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, you know, wait, Jason Lloyd, Jamie, you're more like well versed than me and Dan are, or should I say, Dan and I are, uh-huh. on on horror movies. I'm trying to get educated here on horror movies. Jason claims that there's another movie who already did exactly what this movie did. Uh, that segment did. With, with the eye? Yeah. Yes. What yeah. is it? What is it? I don't remember. But I, but I was thinking the same thing when I was watching it, and I was trying to remember what it was. Does that kill it for you? Because I didn't even know. Is no, it the it eye no, with Jessica Alba? Or, um, no, that was uh, an actual biological eye. Like a, what about you know, um, body something? part? No, that was an arm, dude. Uh, right. Not even... <laughs> hey, that was Duke. I just had it, too. I just had something. Uh, faces in the crowd. Is that it? No. Uh, Mila Djokovic? No. Oh. Uh, oh, no. No. I should text <laughs> I should text Jason as we're doing this. Yeah, like how about the part where where uh, he pulls the sheet off yeah. and he falls or something and then he falls, he looks down the hallway and the lights are flashing and that little girl's in the hallway then she disappears. Yeah, and then she's like right in front of him. But yeah. like right the first time he pulls the sheet back and then uh, he turns around and the dude is and the dude is standing there. That's cheesy. I didn't think so. It got me. Like I wasn't expecting it. Yeah, I thought it was weird. I, I'm with Dan with that one. Your mom is weird. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the jerk off with the bike riding helmet, and he's a zombie. Okay, uh, I don't know what to say about this besides the the, the non spoilers. I don't know. He eats a couple. Who called zombies as soon as the chick comes running up and then turns around and starts puking black shit? Not me. I did. <laughs> Dan, you didn't call zombies on that? Um, I heard there was a zombie segment, so I kind of put two and two oh. together as soon as I... I honestly, yeah. I didn't know anything about this movie. I did not watch right. the minute of... I have not watched any trailers. I don't know... I didn't know anything going on. Oh, out. good. Then you must have liked that third segment a lot. Or, yeah, a lot more. You know what? I think I hate zombies, though. <clears throat> I Is, uh, I don't hate zombies. I'm just... No, I'm done with... The zombie crazy. Thank you, Dan. It's just, it's just fucking. It's so over. Get the fuck out of here. Hey, but please. I mean, I would like to make a clarification here. There's a difference yeah. between getting sick of crap zombie movies that are coming right. out and you know hating zombies. You know, there Romero zombies will always reign supreme. The Walking Dead is fantastic. I don't think that any of the crap that they churn out today is going to sully the goodness of what we already have. You're but right. I, I am, I am, I agree that I'm tired of. Yeah. And they, people make them because they're cheap. It's easy to get extras because everyone, everyone's willing to be a zombie, and it doesn't require a lot of thought. You exactly. know. Exactly. And you know what? It's you know. I'll tell you the two top two played out shit in horror, man. Zombies and vampires. And you know what's next? Ghosts are going to be played out, and that's next, but it's not yet. There's still hope for ghosts, and I'm looking forward to some of that. Well, there's been attempts, but yeah, I don't know, dude. <clears throat> just I, what I meant with the whole zombie thing, honestly, is um, with uh, with all the rules and stuff. You see a zombie, and like you said, it was fucking comical in some points, like you know, and uh, like I said, he could blow his own fucking brains out. Like clearly, this zombie has a conscience somewhat. Well, like, I can so. Oh, what I, I was going to say about that before, but I couldn't. But cause... It seems like that's the only thing left with zombies is to as okay, what rules do these zombies play by? And I think that's the only play that they got left. Other than, like like I said, Love the Walking Dead, I think that's fucking perfect. That's the way it should be handled. But as far as like these fucking movies that they just keep pumping out or whatever, I don't look at this segment 
as any different. Like, you know what I mean? I'm no, glad it was a not. short. I'm glad it wasn't a full length movie. <laughs> it was a short, but you know what I'm saying? But it, it wasn't horrible though. Like it was well done zombies, I guess like zombies that can answer phones and blow their own brains out. Okay. Let's ride. <laughs> Fuck it. Let's go. But I'm just kind of done with it, dude. Like well, and I, that's just me as a fan and personally, whatever. But you know, I think that the, the what happened with him when he butt dialed his girlfriend and he heard her voice I think it pulled back what little humanity of him was left, and right. that's when he was able to to make the conscious decision to blow off his own head. I don't think that he would have done that if she hadn't called. I mean, if he hadn't Agreed. accidentally called her. But what I'm saying is that's the that's the only play that they've got left is as to what angle do we take oh, well, as the zombie. You see what I'm saying? I'm just yeah, uh, that's true. But um, like, it's always about that. Like, what is this zombie movie about? Do you see what I'm saying? It's just like yeah, yeah no, I I get you. Uh, I, get you. I just get a headache, dude. Well, I can't wait for the next season of Walking Dead. Yeah. Well, here I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge that by saying that this has been done before. Uh, but they do it more realistically before. Now they're crossing, Dan's right, they're crossing that line now. Because in any other zombie movie, the only, the only uh, approach to what they did in this little short before was, I'll give you an example. Okay, I don't have one, but, okay, yes, I do, I do, I do, I do. (laughs) Return of the Living Dead. The dude says, I'm not going to become one of those pieces of shit. He goes and he puts himself in the incinerator and he, he, he cremates himself. That was, that was what that guy did, but more realistically because he didn't become a full-fledged zombie like, like Tom Thomas Matthews did. Th- Tom <laughs> Matthews. He didn't become a full-fledged zombie. Leave him zom- alone. I, he is my boyfriend. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, he didn't become a zombie like Thom. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and I'll give you the other example in the movie Vamp with our good buddy Robert, Robert Rustler. Rustler. Robert Rustler, that's my other boyfriend. Exactly. You've got a lot of boyfriends, Jamie. I James. do, I yeah, do. Really? Slut. Jesus <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> but Robert Rustler in Vamp. Check that out, guys. Now, in that movie, he... He... Okay, you know what? I was going to say an argument, but I'm wrong. He actually killed himself... After he was a vampire. Hmm. After all that. Oh, well, Robert Ross was the shit. Yeah, I, my argument was going to be that people usually kill themselves before they turn. But I guess I'm wrong. Okay. Sorry. So, <laughs> anyway, this sucked. I give it a 2 out of 5. Yep, same here. Um, I'm going to give this one a 3. Ooh. Ooh. Wow, you like that? Well, it was funny. I mean, there were, you know, the com- the there were things that were really funny, like attacking the kids at the birthday party, yeah, even though it was really was... fucking early for a birthday party. I thought that was hilarious. Um, anytime you're going to kill a kid, it's funny. Um, and then <laughs> the things like we did when he was eating the wallet and eating himself, like he was a bad zombie. I think that's funny. Like he didn't know how to do it yet. And, um, <laughs> you know, it was, you know, the, but it wasn't great. Like it's le- it's my least favorite. Oh, good. Okay. Of all the segments. Well, then you make sense again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. After watching that piece of shit, the girl gets a nosebleed, and I don't see why not. So that's uh, that's about all that happens in the reach around story. Third story. Now we get to the real stuff. The last two of the real shit. Jamie explained what this is. It's a convent. Or I said that part. Of uh, Jamie, say it again really quick, and then we'll get to the rest. <laughs> It's a commune where a <laughs> cult leader and his crew live, and a film crew is going to do a documentary about them to give people the real idea of how they live, and they just happen to show up on the day when all the shit is going to go down. Okay, good. Now, Jim Jones style. Yes. Now, guys, clearly the, the standout thing about this is that there were subtitles. You know, that's a big deal, pretty much, in any movie. Now, I liked it because I felt that it gave it a more genuine feel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Subtitles don't bother me at all. Oh, I liked it. I liked that. Yeah. I don't – I'm calling bullshit on that language, though. I don't think it was a real language. <laughs> you think they just <laughs> yeah. said say anything that doesn't well, sound did normal? did you try to listen to it? I'm just like, that's not real. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. But if you're watching – 
watching the cult leader when he's talking, he gets all excited and he's just right. like, ah, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> all right. What were the implications made? Uh, he said, you know, a lot of people are concerned of the children being here. And he goes, well, what's your point? <laughs> right. I loved that. Um, and I think his point is, are you fucking them? <laughs> right. I'll tell you what, though. I'm, g- I'm going to tell you a, a little viewer arc I had. The first time I watched it, I felt it was clear to me that he was fucking them. And the second time, I didn't feel that at all. Why is that? Because you knew the rest of the story. Because you knew they were summoning a fucking... Okay, we'll get to that. Is that it? Is that why I didn't? So, so okay, the answer is he was not? Well, you know, honestly, I don't know. Because I, I got the feeling... Of course, I've only watched it once. But I got the feeling that he was as well. Mm-hmm. Because he's purifying them, you yeah, know. Yeah, it's unnatural, um, but it's progressive. Yeah. And I'm purifying them. By the way, people out there, if if any of you are young or just don't know and you don't get the Jim Jones reference, look it up. Because that is some freaky shit. I mean, that's real life fucking horror right there. Not not what? the rapper. No, not the rapper. The cult leader. Jim Jones. Yes. Remember how you, when we were describing American Mary and the dude hanging on the hooks, and you said it's a man called Horse? Yes. Yeah. Can you believe that um I I I I dove back in the Howard Stern show thing and I I really miss Artie Lang. So I've been listening to all the stuff from two thousand two and on since since um February two thousand eleven. And right now I'm in August of two thousand four. And can you believe that as soon as you we did that show and you said that, somebody was talking about something on the Howard Stern show and Howard goes, Yeah, just like a man called horse, and it was about people hanging themselves on hooks for pleasure. What? Isn't That's that... fucking awesome. Can you imagine that? Ah, have you ever seen a man called horse? By the way, I never heard of it, and then you said that, and what? I happen to hear a show from two thousand four. That's crazy. It's crazy. I love it. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> Apparently that's Helen Keller's dog's name. <laughs> <laughs> one one zero zero one one. So one one zero zero one one zero. So what what seems like a B story and like a throwaway story is that the guy interviewing the main guy from this place, his girl, his fiance is cheating on him with I guess I don't know a cameraman or whoever the hell who gives a fuck. She's cheating on him with that guy, and it seems like, well, do we really need this in a short? But her being pregnant turns out to be a huge deal, and it turns out to be a creepy deal when she goes into the classroom after she, like, sort of dry heaves, and the the ladies come in, and they're like, wow, it, they're very beautiful children, right? But not as beautiful as the one you're going to give birth to or something like that. And she's like, well, what do you mean? It's like, yeah, you're going to bear something much more special and little did we know that that would be the hugest part of the story but we'll get to that at the very end so at this point the bell rings after the girl goes you know almost throws up and stuff the bell rings he said it's time time like dan said shit's going down that bell rings and he announces that basically they're all gonna die he takes a box cutter to that toot's throat He's like, ah, bah, 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 bah. I told you to shut the fuck up. But dude, <laughs> and then all hell breaks loose. But and dude, then he okay. stands up. He's like, hello. Yeah. <laughs> hello, if you hear me. <laughs> um, but the only parts that really stick out to me that were really fucking disturbing. Yeah, go ahead. Was, tell that part you're talking about. Well, like we said, <laughs> well, no, no, we're not there yet. Oh, not there, but the other part in the trailer. Oh, yeah, in the trailer, yeah. They, at one point, they walk in, and, okay, so it's a part of a what? Like a sacrifice, would you say? I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea what they're doesn't doing. doesn't even matter. Yeah. So <laughs> you see, like, ten people all in one room fucking just blow their fucking brains out. And it's <laughs> wicked disturbing, dude. You're just like, like, you know what's going to happen, and you're just like, fuck. And then later on, dude, there's another point where there's a guy with a shotgun, and he's got a shotgun to his boy's fucking head, dude. Fucking shoots him in it like that was some fucked up shit. I did not expect that in VHS too. Man, that was crazy. He walked in. He's like, "I ask you to be patient, sir," and he's like, 
No, hold on, man. He's like, I told you, please be patient. And then he, he says, just go, man. And he fucking blows his buddies, the, the, the guy interviewing the guy, he blows his brains out right in front of the dude who, who was banging his fiance. Mm -hmm. That was wild, dude. Best headshot, though, is when the guy is, is uh, he gets into the tussle with the guy who comes in and I guess yep. he's like the cleanup crew. You know, he's like coming in and, and right. shooting people who either missed or didn't shoot right. themselves. And, <laughs> right. and uh, ran out of bullets like that one guy who kept pulling. There was no bullets in the gun. Like, click, click. Yeah, that poor click, bastard. Click, 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 click. Yeah. Don't take him to Vegas. Yeah. Because um, <laughs> he stuck there oh. right at the um, <laughs> But uh, anyway, when he blows his head off, that was pretty gnarly. I oh, mean, yeah. When he looked back at it and there was nothing there but like a half of a head. Mm -hmm. That was really good. Classic. Yeah, he, here's classic. the thing, guys. Here's You can't help but wonder. Okay, so they know it's that day. That day is coming. That bell just didn't come out of nowhere. Clearly, they you know it's scheduled or whatever. So here's what I was saying to myself. Why are they all going about their daily activities while this bell goes off? Like, you know that this is happening. It's going to happen, let's just say, 3 o'clock on Tuesday, June 22nd or whatever. So... Stop watering your plants. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So why are they all just hanging out in class, drawing pictures? Uh, they're, the guy's doing an interview with these assholes. Why wouldn't you make a bigger deal out of this? And here's what I'm going to tell you about that. That makes it a thousand times creepier because they just stop what they're doing emotionless and just kill, kill themselves. Like, that's what makes it yeah, creepy. Dude. You don't that even a know that. Up segment. Yeah, you don't even realize it, but that's what sells it. There were yeah. so many fucked up things about this segment. I mean, like, so much good gore with the headshots being blown off. I love the, the, uh, when the, I don't know what they were, the walking corpses. What were they? I don't know. What oh, they were. come on, Jamie. That's what I was going to get to. What the fuck was that? Here's where, that dipped a little bit for me, man. What, everybody becomes a zombie now? Well, oh, I don't, I don't know if it was, I don't, I'm not, I'm, what I'm guessing it was like is that they were not like zombies, like, you know, come back and eat you and stuff. But I think they were like reanimated corpses for the use of like para, like supernaturally reanimated. Well, yeah, like when he walked into the – he was when, when the, the last guy was walking through the classroom at the end – and um, he like all the kids turn around and they start to grab him and they've all got those eyes, you know, the creepy eyes. And then like he runs out and everyone he passes and everybody it, has. Yeah. Yeah. The first it was the kids in the classroom. Then he runs in the hallway and everybody's like that. See, I thought it was a continuity thing from segment to segment because we see that later in the reach around, too. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, with the dude. Oh, who, yeah. See what I'm saying? So. So there's that, and then there's a zombie one before that. So I just I, – I noticed that too. I was like, oh, oh no, we got zombies. Where the fuck did that come from? Yeah, I don't know if I like that part. I don't know, dude. Yeah, I don't like it uh, that much. I mean, whatever. What it is, is that? It, it takes away the realness of that whole segment. But, dude, can we, can we, can we get to the end? <laughs> realness? realness yeah jamie that stuff is real man you don't you heard of the people drinking kool-aid and shit like that oh no that part's real yeah but i mean how often do you see women split open by you know goat babies who apparently oh. with knives well that's you different <laughs> <laughs> by the way that one woman on the gurney that the guy finds and he uncovers yeah. her yeah. that I fucking love the makeup in that, like in her her split open belly. That was yeah. badass. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was good. However, <laughs> I do have one complaint about the special effects in this in this segment, and that is that they all look fantastic, except for when the girlfriend is um, about to give birth or whatever. Yeah. And her legs are, and after it splits her open, her legs are hanging over the side, completely fake. There are no knees in those legs. It's just pants. Really? With shoes attached, and they're stuffed, and they're just hanging over the side. And I'm like, how do you get everything else so right, but you fuck up a pair of legs? <laughs> I didn't even notice that. One. I didn't notice either. No shit. I got. We got to do a freeze frame and put that on the Facebook. Yeah. It didn't. I mean, it didn't take anything away from me. I still really liked this segment. It just. I thought that was hilarious that they had such good effects, and then the one thing that would be the easiest thing in the world to do. Yeah, legs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, okay, here's the thing. Uh, I'm going to backtrack a little on, on, on my uh, like criticism. Okay, I don't like the zombie shit 
in in the classroom or in the hallway. However, I do like those four girls that were holding her arms and legs. Mm-hmm. I feel like that was cool. It kind of played creepy. No, dude, dude, yeah, but he shoved them down and then they just laid dead. That's true. That's that? true, dude. You're right. That was bullshit. I was oh, like, but, ah. but their hands me of a video were left game. behind. Their hands were left behind on the on the table, like when he pushed them away. Is that true? Their, yeah, oh, I thought that was pretty chill. Okay, that works then. But it reminded me the whole that whole segment right there, and the way they looked and all that reminded me of a Japanese video game, like um, right, Fatal, like dude. Fatal Frame or something like that. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's what it was, and that's that's the hard thing with all these first person anything, whether it be zombies or whatever. It reminds you of the fucking video game because. Yeah. I mean, let's face it, that's what video games are. So, yeah, man, that's what I thought, too. Yeah, you're right. All right, well, the thing I talked about was that the guy, um, the thing that was given away in the goddamn two or three minutes, whenever that was posted, that I posted on Harbin, and it was posted everywhere, so it ain't just me. You fucking douchebag. Yeah, v- VHS2 <laughs> VHS two decided to give everybody a one-minute yeah. clip of VHS2, and it was the goddamn guy who was being interviewed exploding and the guy turns away in the camera and the, you see the blood splatter then he turns back and he's not there anymore that i feel like that would have had a huge impact on me well i got to tell you it did have a huge impact on me and i didn't watch that so that may be why <laughs> can you believe that that was out Jamie no i i really don't know if you're going to well i guess if you're going to pick a segment that you want to draw people in with that would be a good one. However, I would never give away something like that. <laughs> right. Because from the beginning of the segment, if you've seen that clip, from the beginning of the segment, you're just waiting right. for that dude to blow up. Right, like, okay, exactly. Well, when's he going to blow up? Well, when's he going to blow? Well, when's he going to blow? And I hate that. Mm-hmm. I hate it when I know something's going to happen, and then I start looking for it, you know? Automatically, once you see the same uh, surroundings, you're like, okay, this is that scene. How is that going to play out? It's the worst, dude. I took. I was talking to Alex about this, about the Superman things. Um, it's kind of flat as far as like emotional moments goes in this movie, but the the few that were really good, <laughs> it was in every single trailer. <laughs> so like, you got all of that in the trailer. So all those speeches and shit, it was just like, okay, like, it, oh that, oh that was that that was the line. Yeah. Yeah, so it yeah, just, it, yeah. dude. You, what does that tell you? It tells you, you stop watching trailers. Well, it tells you that they'll do anything to get you to watch the movie. They'll give you the fucking best parts just so you think the rest must be great too. It ruined it though. Yeah, I mean, as much as I love Man of Steel, dude, it could have been fucking so much better. No if trailer. Those, if those if those moments actually fucking meant something. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, good though. Exactly, dude. So okay, so. If in case you lost track, but if you saw this, you didn't. The guy who was banging the girl who was pregnant, who was in part of the interview team, he, uh, we just said the four girls are holding her arms and legs. She gives birth to uh, a gigantic <laughs> poop monster. <laughs> monster it's a goat. Fucking giant rubber poop monster. It's a fucking tree dude it's a tree running down a hallway exactly <laughs> this is what fucking set me over the top dude i go what the fuck is that is that a tree and and we find out later exactly what it is but at that point it is not a dragon dude that thing's a fucking dragon at the end yeah. it is not a dragon it's a giant rubber poop monster <laughs> she's like yeah i just gave birth he's 360 pounds four ounces <laughs> yeah <laughs> <I> just- <laughs> To this giant tree monster. What the fuck? Is- it reminded me of the tree from fucking Lord of the Rings. But he. <laughs> or the tree from Troll. No, dude. Here's-, exactly. <laughs> here's the thing. You have to suspend disbelief. Number one, a thing that's bigger than the bitch giving birth to it is coming out of her stomach. So, right there, you say, okay, this is clearly supernatural. We're not going to apply the same. Um, <laughs> logic yeah we're not applying logic we know that this is not going to be a baby who just grew up real quick (laughs) it's an entity coming out of her it's just (laughs) symbolic it's symbolism she gave birth to whatever (laughs) i think it's awesome dude 
No, she <laughs> gave birth to a giant fucking poop monster. Yeah, with horns and curly, curly with, horns. Like, and he has wings, dude. But I'm sorry, the end, dude. Is that fucking? You knew it was coming. You see the. Well, angle. here's the thing. He gets so he starts. He gets in his car, drives away. Oh, dude, that's badass. And then it smashes him over to the side. On me, a Jurassic Park. Yeah. The car flips. He crawls out, and the thing looks over the, the car, and he looks down on him. He goes, Papa. <laughs> and then the dude is sitting there drooling and snotting into the camera. Oh, yeah, what's up with that? that oh, was... man, I loved his spittle and his snottle because they were like, they were swinging and then they were inter <laughs> they were intermingling and then at one point it kind of slapped over on his face. It was very cool. How do you get that to happen? Up. How do you get that yeah. to happen, though? I do. I would like to call bullshit on the creature because um, his neck was a little <laughs> too long. It didn't look believable. <laughs> Oh, that's not believable. <laughs> now, he was very stiff. Did you see how stiff he was? It was like he was – like someone had uh, like a, a model on a stick and they're holding it up like behind like, the car going doo 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 doo. You know? <laughs> like with legs, dude. That's, what, <laughs> that's why I – like that's why this segment, like if there was any doubt as to like how I felt about it, dude, that fucking – Set me over, dude. Like I was like, "What the fuck is that?" And then you see a, a shot at the end, which is cool. But that, those first couple shots of that fucking thing trolling around, dude, come on! Yeah. That, it's just like, okay, this segment went from really cool to fucking outstanding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, that's about all there is to this. I mean. uh that's that. That's the story. So, uh, what do you guys give this? I say, like I said before, four out of five, man. Five. Five. Wow. D uh, Jamie, you said four, right? Uh, yeah. Did I say four? Did really I say liked five? it. Really liked it. Four. Okay. Was there one? Mind. You didn't say five. I don't think I said. I don't think you said okay. five. Okay. Okay. Then. I'm so so bad with ratings. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Sinister. They'll never let you live that one down. <laughs> <laughs> because of that head popping up at the end. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, the chick in the reach around passes out on the floor. <laughs> passes out on the floor. And after seeing that, which I, I understand, I guess. Very so, understandable. Yeah. So, the dude comes over. He's like, wake up, wake up, whatever. And then he just says, well, I'll put a tape in while I'm here. I'll just watch something. I guess. Yeah, oh, and I love how he calls for help. Like, there's somebody in the house the whole fucking yeah. time. Like, help. Like, who the fuck is what? What are you, like, if there was somebody else in the house, wouldn't you be a little bit fucking more concerned? Or at least aware, <laughs> yeah. dummy? Yeah, if you knew that that jawless asshole was in there, I think you'd, <laughs> you'd have a little more concern about it. fucking jaw. And I'm surprised, too. And I, I do like that uh, little thing that they keep in the reach around from beginning to end where, um... They keep kind of playing that, <laughs> like, and if they just played it the whole time, like, they would have, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They would have realized that, oh, shit, that's us. Oh, wait, that's this kid. He's in the closet where his fucking brains are blown the fuck out. Like, No, his and, brains are still in. Oh, no, I'm sorry. They're in whatever, the bottom of his fucking His face. jaws the fuck out. <laughs> fucking jawless bastard. But uh, if they just watch that. And, hey, like... jawless, chew on this, motherfucker. He looks like Dr. Tongue from Day of the Dead. <laughs> Good. The very first zombie that you see. That I love when people only have a tongue. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Well, other body parts are useful, but I am fond of the tongue. Yeah, definitely, absolutely. <laughs> so we get to story number four. Uh, now, is there one more story in VHS? Is there five? And uh, this yes. one. Okay. So what they decided to do was let's look at that now. The progression. They said let's. Let's put more thought into each one and make them stronger. And I think it worked. Story four is the aliens, space aliens. Let's clarify. Not illegal aliens. <laughs> <laughs> they started off with putting... Thanks for that clarification, Alex. <laughs> You're welcome. They start off by putting a camera on a dog, a little doggy. Oh, He's running no. around, yeah. They say, oh, so that sets it up. Doesn't yeah. that kind of look like your dog, Dan? Don't even start with me, Jamie Jenkins. <laughs> no, I'm asking. I'm asking. Same size, but yeah. yes. Your dog way. is like that, Dan? I thought it was like a bigger dog. 
No, same size, man. A little bit bigger, yeah. What was a Yorkshire Terrier? No, no, no. Lap your asshole. It's a what? <laughs> it's a lot of opso. <laughs> uh, it's a it's a it's a dash dash hound. That's why I fucking yeah. Is that all? Oh, that's why I don't like it. Yep. Oh, okay. Let's see now. You know why I feel the way I do about that cat scene in Stitches. You know what? That's a very good point, Jamie. Very good point. <laughs> I get out of here. Stitches. My cat died right in front of me. And, what? Uh, yeah. Damn, this show's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, wasn't that funny when the kid said she's gonna shit out her vag? Yeah, I th- I th- I was like, did I hear that right? Did he just? But there was something that the, hold the up, sister hold said up. to the kid that, was that the I fucking first coffee spit in fucking skeleton crew history, dude. <laughs> I just fucking got coffee everywhere. Dude. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. It's fucking all over me, dude. Dan, oh, you God. have to learn to control your spray. Oh, my God, dude. I thought it was a good time to take a sip. What the fuck? <laughs> Jamie, what were you oh. saying about the vag? There was something that the sister said at one point. Like, she called the, the brother something, and I don't remember what it was, but it was funny. I don't know. It was a jerking off reference, wasn't it? Yeah, he says like he's pull, he's gonna stretch his meat out or something. <laughs> and I want to say that too. Like I said, it would have been a five unless it, you know for the dog incident. But I really did like this. Other than that, that's what killed it. But uh, it was a gr- dude. This one was fucking awesome, dude. But I do, I do want to call not bullshit. But I've seen it so many fucking times where the loud music it's like bah, you know like like we talked about it's just so fucking overwhelming and it is scary All right, but, but dan in the moment though we're, what were you thinking like the first wait how many times did you see this uh once oh really so it, the first time you really noticed that because when i first saw this mm-hmm. it was just part of the movie and i just went with it and the second time when that loud noise happened, I was like, "Oh wow! Look, they, they uh, when when the kids walk in while they're having right. sex, and they go in, yeah. That loud noise happens. I'm like, wow! Doesn't anybody care about that? Like, why is everybody kind of glossing over that? And that's the only time I started really yeah, you're right. f- focusing on on that noise. And then um, th- only the second time did it really like stick out, like sort of uh, if somebody was like like a laugh track and a sitcom and stuff you know if people care about that stuff like holliston <laughs> people have a problem with that it's it's the only time that would stick out to me is when i'm really observing this for review mm-hmm. but in the first time it was like like i i think it's effective dude. i just think it's uh it's overused a lot with aliens and shit it's like you know what i mean like boom that, and it works like, i'm not saying it doesn't i'm just saying it's not that original but the <laughs> fucking look of it and the way this shit was shot, and, and this whole fucking segment was badass, dude. Like, that shit was scary. Like you said, reminding you of fucking signs. What else? Like, mm-hmm. uh, a bunch of cool Probably things. Probably a, but... a fire in the sky. Oh, yeah. dude. Oh, dude, man. Did movie. you guys ever see... Ugh, a, fe- a foot... the fuck is the name of it? Affect it? No. Today, Junior. I know. Is there a lot of good alien movies? Anybody know? You ever see that Aliens movie where the kid builds his own rocket ship and the three of the friends go up in space and the aliens are kind of goofy? Like the movie falls apart when they actually meet the aliens, but the whole thing <laughs> in the beginning was great. <laughs> I am riveted. I can't wait to see this movie. Altered. <laughs> Sorry. What was it? Altered. Oh. Um, which, by the way, was made by Eduardo Sanchez. <gasps> Is he the guy who did this segment? He is. He did one of the segments. I'm not sure which one he did. But um, uh, I'll have to to look up which one. That's he what the did. credits are for, Dan. But anyway, Altered is the movie <laughs> that he made that is an alien movie, and it's really fucking good. Yeah, what? really good. Yes. Um, and there's this one particular scene that just like, oh my god, it just will freak you out. But <clears throat> okay. but yeah. All right. Well, here's the thing. A couple observations. I thought it was cool when they walked in on the sister having sex with the dude. And here's the one part I had problem with the kid jerking off scene. Why? Okay, clearly that's to set up our next POV for the next for the rest of the movie, pretty much. But 
why have why the need to strap the camera back on the dog to catch the kid jerking off? Clearly, you saw him from where you were. There's a thing called Zoom. And number two, there's a thing called Socks. And there's a thing called Tiptoeing into a room. Clearly, the room is opened. You, <laughs> you could have just walked right in and videotaped them. There's no need to go be so intricate and put a dog with a camera on him. Dude, I thought the same thing. I didn't even think of that. I just figured maybe... Um, second watch, Jamie. Second watch. No, I don't know. I didn't think See, it. I didn't. That didn't bother me, but... What? I'm me. wondering how in the hell he's watching porn and jerking off with his friends sleeping right yeah. there and nobody I, noticed. That's what I'm saying, dude. And we exactly. could hear the porn in the other room. Like, right? you know, when the, when they were setting up the camera, mm-hmm. you could hear the porn. So yeah. how are those boys not hearing the porn? Yeah. <laughs> what is the deal? <laughs> <laughs> but then you're followed by classicness. The aliens grab the kids, man. And if they're immediately in the sleeping bags. Holy shit. Is that what that was, dude? Yeah, man. They're dragging him through the... the oh, with... I was going to say what the fuck. That fucking... was badass. That was pretty cool. And the reason... You know why we like that, Jamie? Because we're used to those alien movies where people are in, like, these weird tubes type of things where it seems like they're in the human body or something, you know? Like, aliens always have shit like that. They're spaceships. And Sleeping Bag, that whole point of view, is sort of like that. And it really brings the alien vibe in. Two birds and one stone, in a way. Interesting. Yeah. (laughs) Interesting. It really works, and it's a really great way to combine them right away. Um like the whole time while I'm watching this, do you guys think, do they choose the segments for VHS in order of how great they are? Do you think that this was like supposed to be the, the, the triumphant ending? Yes. I, I'd say if I were to do an anthology movie like this, this would have been last. Save yeah. the best for last. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause we what do you cannot got... have a triumphant video? If Eddie Van Halen doesn't play guitar, <laughs> 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 what was the last one of the other VHS? Oh, that was the Haunted House one, right? Yeah, uh, which yeah, I also which... thought was the best one of that yep. one. Right, and yep. there was one or more that was like the second best. What was the other one? Uh, oh, the first one. It was a good start. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, you know, I, I love aliens. I love ghosts. I love Bigfoot. I love all that stuff. Uh, unfortunately, we can't get a good Bigfoot movie for some reason. I don't know why. We got a rubber poop monster video. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I've been playing the Powerball. If I win, you guys will see a lot of great shit. Don't worry. We're going to fucking hunt Bigfoot down? No, I'm going to hire you, and I'm going to get you out of Baston, and we're going to make some movies, motherfucker. What about me? Uh, you can consult. I'll never leave Boston, dude. Okay, we'll make him in Boston. We'll bump into Adam Green. We'll do the whole shebang. All right. I All like right. it. I'll it. <laughs> so they hide in a barn. The, uh, the loud noises every time the aliens attack, blah, blah, blah. So the kid was sucked into what seems like outer space. And the poor little doggy. Oh, fuck Arr! you. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you I mean, that was so bad. It was really So horrible. horrible. It was really and bad. they show his breathing all fucking. Oh, oh I, I hate that. was a good actor, though. I know, right? Dude, that's what I was thinking, Jamie. That's what I was thinking. I was like, "This dog get axe, son." Yeah, the guy's like, "Sit down, bitch. <laughs> Stay down." So that's that. Great, great segment. I give it a four out of five. Dan, five out of five. Jamie, I didn't get no. I get. Oh, I'm sorry. Nothing. Four for the dog. I forgot. No, it gets nothing. Oh, because of the dog. Nope. Okay. Jamie, four to five. Five out of five. Foe. Oh, because of the dog? <laughs> For show. No, just uh, in general. I mean, I I didn't like that part. It made me sad, but it didn't detract from the segment. How many me. skeleton bones do you give it? It's not real, so. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck How off. many pumpkins do you give it? How many rabbit ears do you give it? All right. Um. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go down the same old rabbit hole. The kid is, uh, you, you see the video of the kid blowing his jaw off. And that's that's real shit, man. You guys ever go on the internet in 1997 when uh, it was new and there was a site called rotten.com oh You've yeah got mail. yeah i know rotten yeah remember how they used to show people with failed suicide attempts mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's crazy cuz people used to put the gun under their chin 
Yeah, and and then they'd fuck it up like he did. Yeah. Dude, have you guys ever seen the Bud Dwyer video? What is it? Oh, the guy, the, the, he was like a politician? Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude, dude of course. On YouTube, dude, that's so fucked It's on up. YouTube? It's on YouTube, dude, in its entirety. If yeah. that, dude, I just saw that like <laughs> two months ago, dude. That shit fucked me up, dude. I didn't know, but like that to me, that was so much more blood than I've seen in any fucking movie, dude. That shit was ruthless. What an asshole. He cared that much about politics. Fucking yeah. get over it, asshole. Oh, I, I, no, he was, uh, he was like um, being persecuted for a bunch of different shit. Oh, so. was he? What was his problem? We should look that up. I don't know. Whatever. He blew his fucking brains out, though. That shit was fucked up. It's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. <laughs> so, okay, so the jawless asswipe is in a closet. The guy goes in, and what does he do? He kills Dude, the Would guy. you call him a jawless asshole? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. He really is, dude. He is. He has no choice. He's a fucking loser. So, fucking jaws. Dude, if you don't got a jaw, don't even listen to this show. If you can't commit suicide, don't even try. Yeah, really. And if you're going to commit suicide, please send in our tape. <laughs> I mean, that tape. <laughs> Alright, so... He kills the guy. Like, he kills... The main guy of the movie. Sort of. And how? Was he strangle him? I forget. Oh. Uh, exactly, you forget. Shouldn't that be kind of a big deal? And it wasn't. So there you go. That kind of sums <laughs> that up. Uh, reach around. It's really nothing. I mean, it's an investigator who looks for a kid, watches tapes, and gets killed. That's not that great. I I, pre- I think watching that video, though, at the end, it kind of paid off a little bit. Um, better than the first one did. Oh, yeah, yeah. duh. I'm, I'm focusing on the wrong thing. The whole re- the reach around story is the, the, the focus is the kid blowing his jaw off. Right. Not exactly the two people watching it, right? Yeah, and and yeah, and they see themselves and they realize that they're in the same spot. And I, I do like that. It, it kind of brings it all around. And What do you give this movie overall, guys? Jamie Jenkins. I give it a four. Four out of five. You really liked it. I really liked this movie. Excellent. I liked it way more than the first one. And uh, I just yeah. I thought that so many of them were really effective. There was a lot of thought put into it. There was a lot of originality. The, the, the effects were great. I just – I was really happy. And I totally, totally fucked with you guys in the beginning when I called it a piece of crap. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, wait, I thought she didn't. Like- I know. No! Oh, I was digging this like hell. It was great. And you know what? I, I want this review to go out to Chris Demeter, your buddy, Chris. He yeah. He's under the impression that every, not every, but mo- most or all, I don't know what he said on Horror Bid, but new horror movies suck. Oh, Chris. Oh, he's <laughs> always telling me how wrong I am, but that's okay. <laughs> he tells us all the time. I still, I still love him. It's all right. <laughs> he shot me down on my Evil Dead remake review, and he said, it don't matter if you see it twice or 50 times. This sucks. Huh. Yeah, he shoots. I, const- I get an email from him right after a show drops. I'll get an email like, no, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you got to love that shit, though. Chris, I'm sorry, man. Embrace the new technology. I love that people still enjoy listening to us, even if they don't agree. That to me means a lot, you know. Yeah, I, um, I just wish they would only give me feedback if they agree, though. So, <laughs> so Dan, what do you think of this movie? One to f- uh, one out of five, you know, Netflix. Yeah, man, I give it a four. I really liked it. But here's the thing about this movie, okay? It's an anthology flick. You got to be in the mood for these, and this is a good one for sure. But I can't see myself watching this like. Again, like soon. This isn't like, oh, I gotta see this shit again. You this know, is like, break this out maybe a year or two down the line. Right. So, exactly. So. It it's is, good though. It's good. It's so funny that you should say that because during the during the cult segment. No, I'm sorry. It was not. It was during the segment where they were looking for the guy after he blew his jaw off, right. and they're walking through the house. And I'm, I was thinking, God, I was like, I really like this movie. But I am like, Shh, would I buy it? <laughs> would I watch it again? Right. Do I need to watch it again? Or, you know, if I do, it probably won't be for a long time. Not because I didn't like it, just because it's one of those things that you don't really need to see that often, you know? Right. It's- right. See, yep. that's the thing about reviews. Even American Mary, I wouldn't suggest anyone buys that. You know, it was really, it was a great time when I watched it. So was 
a lot of movies that we review, but to purchase in in uh, in anticipation of watching what? what? What is the anticipation that goes into buying a movie? Are you going to watch it every year? Is that what we're saying when we say buy it? Or you know, um, I don't know, man. To me, VHS two, I was good with just watching it the one time. And the review, I kind of forced myself to do it again just to really do a good review. Right, right. And I think just like Dan said, I could go a year or two, and I'm I'm okay with it. I think I'll remember enough. And I'm gonna offer a little maybe possible reason for why I think maybe this is. Um, if you look at like, all right, we look at these movies like, okay, it is, it's gimmicky, right? In a lot of ways. Um, the segments vary from from one to the other, or whatever. But I think those gimmicks are fresh, and it's cool to see. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, that's cool. Like, I like that angle they took, or whatever, whatever. So I think like it's one of those where yeah, you come back to it, and you're like, oh yeah, eh, that's a that's a cool idea. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. You know, you get to look at it again. But in no way are you like that is some mind bending shit. I gotta watch that again. I'm buying this on Blu-ray. Yeah. It's just not that movie. Yeah. But, I yeah. really like it and I and you know what? They did that special little thing where they sold VHS on VHS. And, I like that. And I, I contemplated would I buy this? I really liked it. I give it a four. Would I buy it on VHS? I don't I don't know. I don't think so. Oh, I would on. buy it on VHS for the novelty of it. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, well because how often do you get to buy a VHS these days? But is it gonna be in widescreen though? I wouldn't watch it a lot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's weird. We like it, but we just wouldn't watch it. So Did I they guess ever do that with The Ring? Did they ever put The Ring on VHS? Uh, when v- when The Ring came out, you could still buy VHS. Oh. I guess all we're saying is if you want to, if you're willing, if, you, if, if time is precious to you and two hours means a lot to you, uh, we recommend that you would spend it watching this. But uh, is $20 a lot to you? Then, then no, don't buy it. That's it. <laughs> so, I mean, it's definitely not a bad flick. It's fun. It's great. It's good on first watch, maybe even second watch. But I just can't see myself watching this anytime <laughs> soon. Like, I, I'll, I feel like <laughs> I feel like I'll forget about this shit and see it on fucking you know Cinemax one day. But like, oh yeah, dude's a fucking zombie riding through the woods. <laughs> what the fuck? You, you know, picked so. the worst one to, to talk about. <laughs> but. Yeah, so it is what it is. But I'll say this. Let's give it credit. The worst one, the zombie one, was way better than the worst one of part one that a Ty West directed. What? Uh, I agree. It was a big step up from uh, from number one. Absolutely. Which is great. I totally agree. So there you go. Right off that alone, you're good. Fine. This was what I had. This is what I wanted the first one to be. Right. Like, you know. And um, no. I think, I don't know, maybe it has something to do with bringing Sanchez in. And, uh, I mean, he's sort of like one of the grandfathers of found footage. Um, I don't know, maybe that had something to do with it. Like, maybe... It, Fuck Eduardo Sanchez. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> you know what, too, guys? Uh, maybe, mm. like Alex said, too, like, they're gonna... This came out... Uh, the first one came out a year ago. Maybe they'll just keep pumping them out so we won't have to focus on them and they'll just keep... <laughs> yeah, we don't have to watch them again in a year because we'll watch another new one. Yeah, yeah, like, maybe they'll just keep getting better, man. Fuck it, you know? And just keep seeing them like the Saw movies, like, whatever. Fuck and it. I, I'll tell you what, I, I'll be honest, I, I love this format. I think it's great. It's a great idea. One. Well, I think the idea is to keep going. I mean, that you know, they just they want to keep highlighting. That's awesome. You know, different directors. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. We have to buy it, I guess, to make them keep doing it, though. So yeah, that's the catch. Uh, ah, hell. <laughs> damn. Uh, I wish there was another way. Uh, yeah. Can we download it and have them keep doing them? <clears throat> What's download mean? I, mean? I don't know. I don't do that. Adam, I don't do that. <laughs> All right. Better not, because he will wish AIDS on you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's VHS Review, and we will be back after this. Peace. Toad, that's the chick from all them Halloween movies. Sorry, my assistant here has poor depth perception. She can't hear me. She's all the way over there. Man, I would I would so give that girl eat anyway. <laughs> Step right here, Nicola. Oh, good, good. Okay, hang right there, Danielle, uh, just for a moment. Uh, Adam, which way should she stand? Camera left, camera right. Camera left, camera right. 
Make a decision. Which is it? Actually, this isn't gonna work. Danielle, you're fired. Excuse me? <laughs> what are you talking about, Boo? And don't call me Boo. That's what Corey used to call me. And if I can't be her Boo, then I don't want to be a Boo. I shouldn't have to give you what little money I have or give you my pain medication to get you to hang out with me. <laughs> You're embarrassing yourself. I actually think it's way more embarrassing getting fired off an unpaid short film. Don't you? I'm getting fired again? Not you. You all are a bunch of freaks. I am doing this out of the kindness of my heart. And this is what you do to me? You're gonna regret this for the rest of your life. No, he won't. <laughs> Boo. This is Mr. Skin from MrSkin.com with all the skinfo from the latest movies. True Blood is back on HBO and already putting a wooden stake in skin fans' pants. The first episode featured amazing full frontal from werewolf woman Jamie Gray Hyder as she had a lupine lesbian lip lock with Kelly Overton. You'll be howling at the poon. This is the Mr. Skin Minute. Nude on the Stars Network, the retro Miami gangster drama Magic City returned for season two with newcomer Meredith Ostrom as a hooker bearing boobs and bush on a mobster's desk. Forget Miami Vice, this is a Miami slice. And on Showtime, we're looking forward to the season eight premiere of Dexter. The show always brings killer nudity from babes like Julie Benz and Jamie Murray, and let's hope this season keeps up the spilling spree. Hey, Dexter, you better come skinvestigate my splatter evidence. MrSkin.com. Fast forwarding to the good parts. This is a spoiler-filled review. The Skeleton Crew does not fuck around. We will go into Man of Steel spoilers in five seconds. If you think we're fucking around, we will prove you wrong in three, two, one. Superman breaks Zod's neck. We warned you, motherfuckers. All right. Well, Dan and I just got back from watching Man of Steel. Dun, 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 dun. You know what, dude? I don't know who would star, and I don't know what the hell, anything about it. I don't know the budget, and I just don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather just talk about the movie if it's all the same. Yep. Now, do you know, okay, do you know who played Superman? Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill? He's been in nothing. <laughs> okay. <perfect. laughs> no, he's been in one movie, and I heard he's great in that movie. Okay. Now, do you think people were disappointed that the dude from uh, Smallville didn't end up playing him? I would have liked to see that, dude. I love Smallville. Yeah? Smallville's the shit. So you would have been cool if he was, uh... Absolutely. Great Superman. It wouldn't have worked, though. It wouldn't have tied into the cheesiness of that show. With those low-grade, uh, you know, special effects and just the rules that were set up in, in that universe. It wouldn't have worked in a, in, a, in a fucking Superman movie that we needed. Yeah. You know? Well, here's the thing. I, <clears throat> I saw it, and I thought... This movie was so incredible. <laughs> I'm I'm leaning towards like ninety percent buying it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Buying it with not thinking it's perfect. So before we even get to that, okay. So let's just compare it to the old Supermans first. Now <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, let's start there. We made fun of those movies because nothing happens mm -hmm. for most of those movies, yeah. uh, the original Superman movies, and I went and I watched Superman Part 1 on Blu-ray, because I have it, because I, I told you, I bought that three-pack, it comes with 1, 2, and the new one with Brandon Routh. <laughs> did you end up watching Superman Returns? No, I did not still. <laughs> I, somehow, I just couldn't do it yet. Okay, I, I'm going to reference it later, but okay. All right, so... I couldn't even really watch it, dude. I literally... Do you realize that Superman is not, um... What's that dude's name? Oh. Christopher Reeves. 
Superman is not Christopher Reeves for the first 50 minutes? Oh, that's what I'm saying, dude. That movie is so <laughs> fucking boring. It sucks, dude. And, and listen, man. Pa Kent dies of a heart attack. Yeah, like, we get it. Like, he's a poor farm boy. But good lord, dude. Good <laughs> lord. And and let's face it, dude. All those movies, dude, they don't hold up. They're, they're nostalgic, but they don't fucking hold up, dude. No, they don't hold up. They don't hold dude, up. Dude, maybe especially compared to, <laughs> compared to this movie. Come on. Uh, I like but, part two out of the first two, though. But when oh, yeah. General Zod and his, and his, and his fucking uh, bodyguard there. <laughs> <laughs> and I love how they, they made complete uh, reimaginings or reference to the three people. You oh, got yeah. the big lunkhead, obviously, and you got the chick. And well, you got the, the, the lunkhead. Guys. Was that even... I thought that was a machine, dude. Well, yeah, I know, but it was still him, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah it was... Uh, you know, exactly, like reference-wise. Exactly. It was spot on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, dude. The, the, for all intents and purposes, that dude was like a big machine lunkhead, and and so. that's what I'm saying. Exactly. You, no, that's right. That's right. <laughs> spot on, dude. Like, and he he needed no emotions. I mean, there's a lot of fucking characters in this movie too. And and and, and I want to start. Can I start off by saying this too? When you start Superman, especially in 2013, trying to fit Superman into a into a real world is very very tough. I think in the 80s, um, the, the, the approach they took to Superman, people were more fascinated to see Superman on the screen and what they did with it, make him fly, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Like we said, though, wouldn't hold up today worth, worth a pile oh, of shit. No. Like, their 80s movies, they're nostalgic for a lot of people, and I know a lot of people get mad at that. Fuck you, dude. It's 2013. I want to see some shit, dude. Yeah, at least admit it. Look, even if you want to go to horror, mm -hmm. let's go to the one everybody, well, some people can't stop talking about it, Halloween. Oh. Let's just let's just go there and say that if Halloween came out today, people would walk out halfway through the movie. Uh huh. Oh, They'd be absolutely. bored. They'd be like, "What the hell is this? This is like some indie movie. This it's should just go time, straight man. to." Yeah, they would think it should go straight to DVD mm -hmm. if it came out today. The only people who could truly appreciate it and and see that that's there's a fine line there because then you would have twenty year olds today who love Halloween and appreciate it for all it is, like we do. Yeah. They right. would say, well, I'm 20, and um, I don't think that, mm -hmm. so you're wrong. Yeah. But you know what? You're just not part of the general public. I got news for you. You're different. Right, right. The general public would think Halloween sucks. Yep, absolutely. Sorry. It would today, and there's no denying that's not to take away anything it does. Hold it up to, to the movies today, and but of course that's a contradiction because what where would it be without Halloween? You know what well, I mean? It's a whole th dude. It's all whole when thing. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. When it it was meant to be, when it was. That's all it comes down to. So, dude, yeah. So with this Superman though, are you fucking kidding me? This is the Superman movie we have been waiting for. I mean, let's face it. I got problems with this too, but like you said, man, I. It, we're gonna and we're gonna talk about those problems. We're I wonder if we have the shit. same problems. That's oh, what dude, I'm interested oh, in. I can't wait to get into them because I have major fucking problems with it. Yeah. And, and, and oh yeah. And it, but you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use that as a little preface, and I'm gonna get into those things. But I'm just not gonna, right away because it's good. I'm just gonna say it, it right exactly. I love this fucking movie, and I'm gonna tell you exactly why. We're gonna get into the problems first because I. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, you want to get to that first, yeah? Yes, yes, because I think it's hilarious. You saw my posts on our Skeleton Crew. Oh, by the way, everybody, please, if you're listening, join the Skeleton Crew Facebook page, join the group page, and put the theskeletoncrewshow.com into your favorites on your computer, because that's the uh, final source to getting to us no matter what happens. So, Okay, I'll tell you this right off the bat. I think the first two acts, I, you know, I think we everybody puts them into three acts, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so the, the first two, I think, are 95% perfect. Right, okay, yep. Mm -hmm. I think it's perfect. And on that alone, I'd buy this movie. Mm -hmm. Even now, though I'm not digging what happens so much at the end. Okay, so you're talking, so you had a problem with the end, basically. And mine's at the end. Okay, and it's not, and it's not specifically with the CG? No. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, what's your CG problem? Uh, there was way too much of it. Uh, towards the okay, we're get, we're hopping around here already, but yeah, all, you know, and uh, we'll get right into it. Yeah, there was a the, the third act consisted of basically three fights, right? There was three major fights. The first one was the first one with the army involved. 
uh, with the army involved in the chick in the town, which was yeah. spectacular. That was some of the best fucking CG I've ever seen, dude. To see Superman in action like that was some of the coolest shit ever. Yeah, okay. I'm, with, I'm, still, I'm still with that one. Go ahead. On board. On board. The second one now. All of a sudden, it gets a little long because he's out on the other side of the fucking earth fighting a big robot tentacle for about eight minutes, dude. It's so unnecessary, and, and there's a lot in this movie that they fucking crammed in, and that's one of my biggest problems with this movie overall. The tentacle part? The tentacle part. Why the fuck did he... I, I get it. I get it. I, I understand why he has to do that, and, and I understand that, okay, so you set up the CG, you, you do it with the, the, the henchmen, you, you establish the CG, okay, and then you gotta face the problem. What's the problem? Zod sets up this... Oh, what is it? It's basically they stole it from the Matrix. That's all I kept thinking was the fucking babies. It was a baby reproduction. I, oh, I yeah. hated that plot line, and that's one of my yeah, other... Yeah, I didn't like that plot with the, with the skull that evaporated into his body. It's Superman. People will love it because it's Superman. You don't need... This was two and a half hours, dude. Don't I know! I loved this movie, but there was a lot to take in. I think further viewing and, and, and digesting it as a whole, maybe it'll sit better with me over time, realize it, but in a movie Movie, in a two and a half hour long movie, it was a lot to take in, bro. <laughs> Dude, want me to be totally honest with you? Yes. I'm not sure if it was because I saw it in 3D. Did you? I had a fucking headache when I was done. I, me too, dude. Oh, dude. You did too? too? Yeah. Dude, I, I swear on my life, this is not for jokes. I had to take some Advil when I was finished. Did you drink before you went in? Uh, Nope, I didn't do anything because I left right after work. I drove from work. Right to the duty. I'm such an idiot. Check this out. I left work at 3.30. Yeah. Drove to the theater, which is five minutes from my house, right away, yes. to get the seat I want. Yes. There were three other people in the theater. I know. Dude, is it same here? Dude, no, there were four. There were two couples. Oh, four? Oh, yeah, yeah you're right. One guy had his girlfriend with him. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There were four people. I did all that for nothing. I should have went home and got some free, you know, snuck some soda in my jacket and uh -huh. so I can get something to drink no, at least. I think it had to do with the and, – and let's just say though too, can we mention – since you mentioned the 3D, that was some of the best fucking 3D I've ever seen, dude. That was Are so, you serious? I loved the way they did the 3D in this movie. I don't like the whole 3D experience overall but for what it was. But yes – 3D and headaches go hand in hand because I remember in Final Destination 5, same fucking thing happened. I got a headache like a mother. I'm going to tell you this. I don't know if it's me, man. And I eventually sat there and I said, now, wait a minute. I'm going to talk about this movie and I'm going to mention that there is nothing that's 3D in this movie. Mm -hmm. And I have done this a couple of times. Is it just me? So I start staring at the screen, like really trying to focus. Is this guy in front of this one? Is this thing in front of that? Honestly, dude, I don't know if it's just me or what. I 3D doesn't register to my brain. You know what it is, dude? It's not all 3D. There's certain shots within the movie because it was the same same thing, dude. I was it was fucking with me, so I took the glasses off. Some are shot regularly, and some of the fucking really popping shots are in 3D, and, and those are the ones that really worked for me. The real action. What what were... worked? I don't even remember anything that's 3D. The only thing I remember, dude. Was him flying down the building at somebody. That's all I remember, and that lasted five seconds. As far as what? Remembering 3D, 3D. shots? Oh, okay. No, there was a lot, dude. There was definitely a lot. Really? And it doesn't register to me. There were even shots of 3D uh, within the Daily Planet and all that thing with Lois. But yeah, dude. So, all right. So, 3D, whatever. I don't even want to talk about the 3D. Yeah, I cares. want to talk about the fucking movie. Yeah, no, but it did. It, it gave me a headache towards the third act. So, maybe, that, maybe there is something wrong with that being too long. Now, the fight with Zod... It saved it, and no, I. Wait, which one? It. The last fight. The last fight. I loved it, dude. But but you're right. I think it. Be, but I I. I, I, if I were to blame that and, and try and take my headache out of it, I'd look at him going across the world trying to fuck up the plan. And he went over and he fucked up the plan and he did what he had to do and it was cool, more CGI, whatever. If they just cut that out, dude, it would have been epic, dude. Wait, you know, cut I, what out? That, that, uh, when he goes and fights the tentacles. That's what really your problem is. It's it, yeah, it's too long of a period of 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 action sequences and and of yeah, you're right. There was never any stop of action, dude. There was nothing. There were little tiny breaks with um the building falling with Perry White. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, I reference this as um it's not Jimmy Olsen. It's like Jane or something stupid. It's yeah, something I don't, else. They, don't, they call her something else. Yeah, I don't even know her last name or whatever. But that's another thing about this movie I love, dude. They and now. Oh, 
Alex, I got to ask you, dude, and this is a very tough question, too. This is going to back to the score. I could have swore I heard in the very beginning of the movie a little bit of the John Williams score. A, just a little bit of it. Just a, a little thing. And I forget which scene it is. It's in the very beginning. Um, I think it's when Superman's being born. I got, so if anybody's listening and, and you know what I'm talking about, I could have swore that it was very faint, but it was the same notes, the, the Superman theme. And, and so if, if you know what I'm talking yeah. about, I could have swore. So tell me, tell me if you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, yeah. So going back to, yeah, uh, that's what gave me a headache though. I thought it was too, it, it not gave me a headache. That's what I thought kind of, it was just too much CGI back to back to back fucking blah, 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 blah. Like, and if they took, it, it's like, is it really necessary? And it was great CGI. It was some of the coolest shit I've ever seen. That's the problem with this movie. I, I, the, the first thing I thought of, dude, is I would love to like kind of pause it maybe like an hour and a half in and maybe come back to it and just kind of digest it a little more so you can kind of focus it. But it's so much to take in, bro, from start to finish with the whole Lois Lane thing and setting up the parents and, and, and with Clark. And you know what it was a little weird, man, was the mom scenes in the that house. Was, like, oh. Yeah, the car goes through it. Like, there's, there's just some things I just can't believe that certain people didn't get killed. There was one scene with Diane Lane, dude. I felt like I can't believe what of a missed opportunity it was when they were sitting on the front porch stairs, dude. And I thought she was going to say something very epic. And, and it was nothing, dude. It was like a dud. And I don't mm -hmm. think her performance was horrible. I just think that that particular scene, it was such a lost fucking thing. And yeah, it was too much with, uh, okay, can, can we get to the parents real quick? Do you want to have a little parents discussion and, and the whole... Oh, the beginning? Oh, dude, the beginning was friggin' amazing. If you... God, comparing this to anything that was done before, man, this was what a movie should be, dude. This... This was unbelievable. We should really start from the beginning. What did you think of the Krypton shit? Holy motherfucker. That was Russell Crow. Just think, yeah, I hate Russell Crowe, dude. Back when I was a rap star, I, I made a rap, and it said... <laughs> I know I'm a little something. My thinking's a little distorted. I'm still trying to figure out why why Russell Crowe wasn't aborted. <laughs> it was I could solve that problem and release some of this anger. Just get me a time machine and a coat hanger, or something like that. <laughs> and that was me saying I, I wish I could have aborted him before he was alive. He is a despicable piece of shit. And he throws phones. What's that? Yeah, he throws phones at people's faces and stuff. And when you when you have a privilege privileged life like that, and Halle Berry and Jason even said, you, you, "Wait, what did Russell Crowe really do, though? He threw a phone. Okay, I, I, he was drunk, dude. But dude, no, he's in a no, dude. I have heard people. There are, are <laughs> accounts of different actors and everybody else who works on in Hollywood. They said he is the most obnoxious piece of shit in the world. Yeah." He thinks he's better than everybody in every way, not just. Uh, well, he killed ability. it in the role. And how great was it to see uh, to see Jor-El fucking, you know, fighting people, taking bitches down, taking, you know, everything. It was great, and, and that's the thing. It's like, what did we get? A fucking floating uh, dude in Saran wrap before? Come on, like you know, it was it was great <laughs> to see him, dude, you know, and, and and there was none of that. I like the whole fucking that was their uh, costumes, dude. So the Superman costume actually makes sense. Like that's what they wore over there. Finally, you can make yeah, it make right. sense in yeah. a world where we live in, where they're making the Dark Knight trilogy, where they're making. You know, Batman dark as a motherfucker, but soup. But Superman isn't that though, dude. Superman, but you have to apply him to a dark world. I've heard complaints. Exactly. The the introduction of Superman into this world is absolutely realistic, perfect. How about his introduction? Okay, so that that shit was great. I love the lineage, how it takes a little hop as soon as you see that rocket ship come in right into the Kent barn, and then boom, they flash forward to the boat. How much do you love that fucking break? You don't have to go through, I thought I thought it was going to be another fucking 10, 20, 30 minutes. Oh, dude, I don't want to see that again, dude. They cut to the boat. And instead, we got little snippets here and there that put it all together. And then it was like, wow, I didn't have to sit through any of this shit. This is really cool. 
constantly hopping back and forth between where he is now, going right into Superman, and then flashing back into why he is that person is fucking some of the best storytelling I've ever heard. Some people didn't even like that shit, but you know what, dude? Superman is 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 a very subjective film in the sense where it's going to be directly related to what you think it's going to be. So there's no way they can do this right and please everybody. I think it comes down to storytelling. They have to still tell the fucking so- Superman story. So start fucking from the beginning and 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 do, tell it how the way you want to tell it. But you got to hit all those notes, and they fucking nailed it. Uh, okay, I loved everything. The guy who played him was perfect. The writing was good and solid. I didn't like the story with the babies, like you said, but okay. I did love the spaceships coming into Earth. I loved how they took over the Earth. I loved the whole thing, how they were going to turn Earth into the new place that they would have their whole uh, people from Krypton. That's great. So I'm yep. digging everything. Okay, the tentacle scene Dan didn't like. I, I guess I didn't particularly notice if I liked it or not. I just watched and... We're nitpicking. We're, we're nitpicking. I love it to death. We're nitpicking, dude. If I if if I were to take something out, it'd be that scene. Uh, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. But that might I might not even subconsciously know it that that might have made me like the next thing more. So here's the thing. Whew, okay, here's where it fell apart for me, and I don't mean fall apart as in bad movie. The battle, the next battle. After okay, when the when the two spaceships were shooting the stuff between the earth and destroying the gravity and the buildings were collapsing and stuff, I thought that was awesome. That is that is really dark, hardcore oh, yeah. stuff right there. Yep. Love it. Thought it was great, and I loved how it's so dark. Then we get to the part where we're fighting people. Okay, so the 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 army was shooting missiles and they just kept shooting into the earth and it was destroying more stuff okay that's still cool during this battle there must have been 10 or 15 buildings that were taken down in whatever city that's supposed to be in metropolis it didn't look like new york like it didn't part in the original movies yeah, where is Metropolis in, like... Re- yeah, the same know, place as Gotham, I guess. Things. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's supposed to be New York, kind of. Yeah, sort of New York, exactly. Right. Okay, buildings are falling down, people are running. Oh, by the way, these are spoilers. Superman fights and destroys a whole town fighting this big robot guy and the chick. And after all this destruction, which is cool, I still liked it, mm-hmm. they go, wow, he is here to save us. He's our friend, right. or whatever. Meanwhile, a whole town got destroyed because of Superman, and instead of saying, man, this guy came here and caused all these problems, they're just like, oh, well, that's cool, he's here to save us. And everybody glosses over the fact that people have died and a town is destroyed. Now, we're getting to the second part, where half of Gotha, or Metropolis is destroyed. It's, it's the perspectives that really open up big gaping holes for me and it's like the whole entire the world as they know it it seems hundreds of buildings are destroyed everything's messed up and it's all because of superman and his war with these people that they brought onto this world and it's like man if you were never here we'd all be alive right like for example first think of it like this let's just say you dated somebody's daughter Right. And you broke up and you were dating for a year and then you broke up and just to get her back, you did some kind of harebrained scheme where you tricked her to doing something. You she, she got in the car with you and you took off and then you guys, you guys drove, I don't know, somewhere and a drunk driver hit you and then she died. The whole family would be like, if you never took her, our daughter would be alive right now. This is all because right. of you. You know, right. that's how people are. They always need someone to blame. So, right. and they blame the per. Even if it's not you who's doing it, you didn't kill the daughter. Someone else did, but it's because of you. And that's how the world thinks. Nobody thought this. This never crossed anyone's mind in this movie. That yes, wow, you are the reason everything's gone. But hey, I'm glad it worked out for you, bro. Like that's how they were really thinking. And 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 it just and oh, well, that's not even my main point. But but here's the main part. I guess if, and somebody said this really great on Facebook, I forgot who it was because I've been talking to a lot of people this weekend, 
well, gee, if we destroy one building and that's really cool, then it must be even better to destroy a hundred. Right. And that's exactly what I was thinking. Dude, well, okay. it, I felt horrible. I'm sitting there, and as buildings are falling, and that next battle started with him and Zod, and more, I, I literally thought it was over. And then 20 more buildings fall. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And I, can we go back to, to your first point, and then we'll get to that after? Hmm. Back to your first point, dude, about the whole uh, humanity thing. Dude, that is the whole theme of this whole movie, dude. When Clark is growing up and he's got that opposition of, you know, uh, Pa Kent saying, you know, don't use your powers and and, and don't show people because, you know, who, you know, let, let them die. Maybe you should. Maybe he says that line. Maybe, you know, so it, it, it's all going back to should we trust the humans or not and even even with uh, that scene where where you know like i said that the soldiers roll up on him and that's the whole theme of the movie is not if you know it's both it's can we trust him and a lot of it's can he trust us you know are we trustworthy people and that's why with the whole perry white scene and all that shit dude a lot of times when you got big blockbuster movies and shit like that you have to focus in on certain characters and i think it's out of place in every movie i think it's out of place with fucking Viv Viv vivica fox and then she meets the first lady and they they get together as a little band of misfits like that's how the end of the world scenarios go you have to focus in on certain little characters whatever they see that that he's he's fighting for for them for he's a good guy he's trying he's saving he's they never would have even come there if it wasn't for him but dude you don't that's the whole theme of the movie though is is he is a human he was born here you know no, but dude and, here's the thing it didn't come off the same way you see in in the original part two when zod and the two assholes came down it looked like they were invading the, Earth. Assholes, the merry band of assholes yeah and, and <laughs> yeah and here's the here's the reason why it's a completely different thing when when they came here in part two, Superman was already here for a while. It was established that he's here. He saved helicopters. He saved cats out of trees. He, right. he got robbers who were crawling up buildings. He is here to do good, and that's all it is, but we're done. Yeah. Now, in part two, uh-oh, we have invaders. Oh, great. Superman's here, though, and he'll stop them. So right. that's the difference. In this one, nobody knew about him. And we all get introduced to it. You first see the people who are even coming here. So it's like, well, why are you even here? Oh, you're here because of him. He's the reason you're here. And now all of a sudden the shit happens. Now we're up shit's creek. He said hand over Superman, and what did he do? He surrendered himself, and Zod had other plans. Yes, like I said, that was one of the reasons for coming to Earth, dude, because he heard the beacon when it was activated. Yes, but you know what, dude? Krypton's got blown the fuck up, motherfucker. Where else are they going to go? They're there to breed yeah, but nobody knew that, though. babies. It doesn't matter, dude. That, so you said nobody knows? But it doesn't come that... off the same. He doesn't, he doesn't come off as a protector of Earth. He comes off as he brought that, his problems here. Exactly. That's the whole theme of Superman, dude, is being an alien on this planet and adopting all the human characteristics, being human, almost like a, hey, hum humanity, we got to look out for our own. That's the whole theme of Superman, dude, is the alien thing. It starts off in the beginning as a kid, him getting teased, dude. And think about it, dude. I want to highlight this scene in particular when he saves um, that bully from drowning, when he goes yeah, back to show in. him 50 times. I love I love that. But, but yeah, the third by the third time that was stupid by by the second time dude and the second time they showed that bully when he came and took his hand and helped him up after he saw clark getting bullied again yeah. that was exactly to contradict what pa kent was was uh saying not to do he, he says yo you go out there and people are going to expose you and they're going to rip you apart and they're going to do this the bully was a, the exact example of the contradiction of that saying this guy saw me you know he had his mom in the beginning or whatever but he's helping him now so hey we'll look in out for each other he gets him he thanks him he embraces clark's powers he's cool with him now see what i'm saying he even says i was born in kansas how, am, how more american can i get that's just something i thought of i don't really mind that too much right, right, right. oh yeah i got you nitpicking i will be honest the main gripe is there was too much action at the end and too yep. many buildings came down and that might sound stupid what does that mean too many buildings so what is 12 okay like it's like no it's not that it's like i'm counting them but at the same time, eventually, there's so much destruction, it's almost like, well, who cares anymore? It, it, it gets to a point where it, 
it just doesn't mean anything. Like I remember in in the the part two, it was a freaking big deal that he threw Zod or somebody into a freaking Coke, uh, a Coke Coca Cola display. Yeah. Yep. You know, and that was a huge. Oh my God, he messed that up. Holy shit! And and they ripped off the antenna on the Empire State Building or something. And now everything's gone. And it's like, well, then where's the value if if everything is is accessible to be destroyed then then what's the value in anything you know when when you could destroy everything then where's what are we supposed to care about anymore you know by by the, the 20th minute of something being destroyed a building coming down well mm. what what part are we supposed to w- hope is safe who who are we supposed to care about you're right dude you're right and that but would you say that that happens in a lot of these kind of fucking no games? i don't absolutely not no. Really? No. Okay, well, some of them. It, see, I have that problem, like I said, with Independence Day, which is also a favorite of mine. But same basic scenario of the end of the world scenario. Not the same themes, but it's it's. A, I, I reference it because it's such a big movie and I love it. But at the same time, it's just, I, I see your point. I just, it, to me, it's just kind of, I have other bigger gripes with it. Lois Lane. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but here's the thing. It's almost like the span of the fights. I thought it was too much and it was way too much destruction. It was a lot of fucking. We, you don't need that in this super. Like, no, I said, you don't need Superman that. Superman is enough, dude. You fly into a building and fuck up a building or two. It's great, dude. Yeah, you don't need to fuck up 40 buildings. Yeah, dude. And even when they're in the diner, dude, and they're just going blah, blah, hand to hand combat when he's with the fighting with the chick and shit. And it's just like, you don't need all of that. And, and especially add on, like you said, um, you know, building every two fucking seconds being smashed through. okay this is superman dude okay you like what you just said you have to value each life equally not just catch lois lane 10 times he is superman but to counter counterdict my own self dude he just became superman dude this is an origin story he's kind of an immature guy he plays it like a young clark kent he is he i think they call him 32 in the 33 movie. But he, I think he's a little immature for that. He, especially you, just finding out that okay, when when your real dad just says, "Yo, son, go get him." Especially after Park Kent's been like, "Don't do it, son." Especially at the, yeah, that was he's, weird. He's gonna he's gonna prove his point too. The complete by, opposite of two different fathers gave two different lessons. That's the, but that's the whole that's the whole thing of Superman. He says, "Don't trust him." Blah blah blah. He says, "Go get him. You're powerless. You're a god." What do you do? How do you balance that? That's what I think made for such a good fucking story dude is how do you balance that especially after he sees his dad get sucked up in the fucking tornado dude that was wild man that proved his point he puts his hand out and he's like don't do it and he says this is my father i'm going to obey him i respect him enough to do that and then boom he gets fucking taken away do you really here's the thing though it's it's a very guilt um driven driven thing too it's one of the but i don't think that's the main thing that that drove superman i thought it was a good catalyst within the story but it's almost like all right did we really need that i don't know maybe it was it, i thought it was an extreme way to go oh shit here comes a tornado just it, it, it is in kansas granted but I thought mm-hmm. it, wouldn't that be so funny if like uh, a house was up there and like a witch and yeah right <laughs> yeah it was just a little on the nose so it, it was whatever though bro like, like i said i thought it was an extreme way to go it was an emotional moment and 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 i thought henry cavill handled it great i've heard a lot of gripes about Every time uh, he shows emotion, he just screams, which is true. But you know what? <laughs> that's how people react sometimes. That, that, they're saying that's his emotion range. But no, Superman, you know, it, it's a hard character. You got to no, go. No, he was fine. I, I don't. I have no problem with him. Fucking great, dude. So, anyways, yeah, jumping around though. I'm sorry, but but listening to Parkhead and then listening to Jor-El and realizing that he's meant for great things or whatever, and then yeah, you're right though. Superman was one of the reasons. Well, he was the main reason. I sh- I should say the main reason Zod came. But even when Superman surrendered himself to Zod, dude, and, and and he was like, I don't think Zod's gonna keep his word, and and he didn't, dude. You know? Yeah, but d- how come nobody said ever since you got here everything's destroyed? Nobody even held him accountable. That's why they started shooting at him. All three of them. They said, "Is the blue guy the target?" No, no, dude. This at that at that point, barely anything was destroyed. 
at that point, dude. In what scene did they reference that everybody was fucking so happy with him? The people that he saved, and they showed, you know, personal references as far as the army, which would happen, dude. If there was an alien invasion, who's going to be front and center of the army? He's catching dudes from fucking helicopters, dude. He's doing everything he can. They go, they roll up to him after he gets thrown into the vault. They got guns to him, dude. He says, nope, stand down. This guy isn't our enemy, dude. It's the whole Superman thing of saying, you're one of us. You're a human, dude. It, but that's, that's just that, not realistic. Dude. There was a lot of, like you said, that character, you know, with the, uh, with the, the I the hop. Jimmy- character oh yeah the i uh, yeah the that guy too yeah like i i, I appreciated that guy that sh- he should have been taken out of the i heart he gives him a look oh another fucking gripe with this movie are you kidding me dude at the fucking end bro with the chick i think he's hot yo fuck you get the fuck out of here it doesn't belong in this movie you're not making and then jo- he works at the daily plan and somebody said that the, the daily planet wouldn't it have taken 10 years for that building to be it wasn't the Daily Planet that fell, though. It was the one next to it. Oh, co- yeah, and the Daily Planet. Okay, then that just happens to stand up. You know, out of all the buildings, oh, thank God our buddy's building stands up, you know. Like- Grant, though, but it was a lot of destruction, but it was, no, nah, dude, to give it credit, though, I counted at that point, it was around the whole city, and they were crashing through a lot of buildings. Build- a lot of buildings were taken down and shit like that, but in no in no way did it did it mean total destruction dude I think. it was total destruction unrecovered dude the world the world trade center was taken down it took 10 fucking years for that no 12 years for that shit to be put back up you're telling me the magnitude of that that would take if if one building takes 10 years for sh- paper and paperwork and shit to go through and all that right. should be built up it would take about 300 years before all those buildings were put back to normal maybe it was under construction and they just didn't show that part and but they didn't they didn't even reference though how long um they flash forward and until he went but dude, to that's this. stupid anyway oh i'm gonna work here like yeah that'll work see see that's one of the big gripes everybody's having with this movie is that end scene i kind of liked it but i i didn't i i think see here's one of my main things with these movies okay they already greenlit man of steel too okay and i know this is a bad reference to use with you alex because i know you're a fan of batman begins but i'm just gonna make this reference because you know this you know it's kind of the general thing this is i hope we see a dark knight version of superman with with lex luther did you like the lex luther reference I don't remember it. It was uh, they crashed into a Luther Core uh, uh, big fucking tanker truck. Dude, who would know? They blew up two billion things. I don't even know what they. <laughs> no, they they, did. they they fought right in front of it for a while. It's big fucking plastered all over it. And oh, what was the other reference that they made? Oh fuck, they did another one. I can't remember. God damn it! Where they had to follow Mister Clean. <laughs> Mister Clean. I wonder how they're gonna do Lex Luthor. But anyways, um. Well, how do you I rate w- this movie though? Oh, man. From one to five. One to five? Really oh. liked it, loved it, all that stuff. Oh, I loved it, man. I, yeah, uh, five out of five? No. Uh, hmm. Okay, so you get five out of five, but how about from one to ten? All right, yes, okay, yeah, five out of five. I, I can't do five. Yeah, I would give this an 8.5, okay? And and I want to get to one more gripe, too, and it's not a huge gripe overall as far as character is concerned, but Lois Lane, I thought she played it okay, but holy shit, was she everywhere. She's following fucking jor uh, Jor-El's hologram and fucking, you know, she's, she's everywhere, and she was everywhere, dude. He caught her three fucking times, Alex. I think mm. three or four times. No, no, this is legit, dude. And what? And then they're going to fucking kill Get the fuck out of here, dude. It, it, it was too rushed. Um, they should have alluded. Yeah, that kiss didn't seem right. Oh, dude, it was so off, bro. But you know what, man? It's, it's a Zack Snyder movie. I, I appreciate the fuck out of this movie so much that shit like that, I will gladly go past it. I remember, dude, sitting in the theater, and I and I can't remember exactly at what point it was at. I know it was during the lineage part, and then him getting into who Superman was. Oh, the flying scene, dude. The first flying scene when he was like hopping. Yeah, that was cool. That was cool, because I didn't think we were going to see that, dude. I thought he was just going to be like, oh, I can fly now. You know, I figured he figured he, he could fly by then by the time he got the suit on, but to see him fucking cruising up there, dude, and, and that's another thing. They did a couple different angles with the flying, too. When he was fl- uh, flying around with Zod, they, they did a first person. And I thought it was some of the badass fucking... A, a, all of the flying was ridiculous, dude. And let's face it, man. This is the best Superman movie they've ever made. Oh, yeah. would you say? Would well, you say? Well, actually, I think the Brandon Routh one was a little bit better. <laughs> 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 See, that's what it is, dude. We got the emo Superman, or what do you want? You want both best of both worlds. And here's what I'm gonna say quickly about the trailers too, okay? Did you watch all the trailers to this or 
Okay. Most of it um, depicted the Pa Kent scene, the um, uh, blah, 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 the Diane Lane scene when she's talking to him in the closet, which are all terrific scenes, but they played this movie like it was going to be extremely dramatic, and I noticed that all the dramatic scenes were, were uh, there was something that I couldn't take away from it. The gravity was taken away from it because I saw all those pivotal scenes in the trailers. I need to stop watching trailers, Alex. This is a fucking problem, yeah, bro. See, I don't I don't watch every trailer. You watch every single trailer. I'll watch one, dude, and that's it. And I've said this before, too. I think that this is the most brilliant marketing ever done on a movie, dude. It's It was perfect building up to it, but the emotional hits that were made weren't they they didn't have the gravity i I thought they would have they would have been and they did they really did on me but i'm like oh i know what's gonna happen you know he talks to his father his mother's talking to him with the closet and then with jor-el saying you can save him you can save him all all epic oh sorry i just hit my fucking desk i all, all these things pivotal moments but i feel like because i've seen them in the trailer it's like fuck man god damn it at the same time you know it i said it's a brilliant campaign but at the same time dude it fucked me up because all those scenes dude as brilliant as they were didn't have as much gravity dude yeah. man i gotta stop watching trailers bro yeah <laughs> well, I give it a four out of five. I really liked it. All right. As far as see, it's hard, man. I think it was a little gratuitous, if you want to call it that, with the the destruction. I think you desensitized us while we were watching it. Agreed. I give the first two acts um, a ten for each one. Brilliant. Yep, brilliant. And I love everything, the whole approach, the way it was done, who did it, all that. I give the last act. A 6.5 or a 7 and all together I think it would also add up to the 8.5 you just said so I think we have the same rating but I didn't I didn't love it I just really liked it because of the ending but if I watch it again which it's weird because I was saying sitting through all that destruction again how could I like it more I have to sit through it all over again I wish just left less stuff was destroyed and it would mean a little more when it was destroyed that's all I'm saying Uh, I totally agree man totally agree that's all I'm saying I think me and you are pretty much on the same page. Um, yeah. I know we talk about – we're definitely identifying the same theme as far as um, adopting Superman as one of us and, and getting the way. You're right though, man. I want to just add to your point. Everybody would be pissed, but this is an origin story, dude. Shit just went down. I think uh, just to counter to, count, counteract with what you said – just about you know with the army and him saving people or whatever i think we got the gist of it what are you gonna do have him saving 50 million people all at once and then them saying oh okay he just saved us he's a good guy or whatever i'm sure the story will get out there maybe even in the next one there'll be a problem i, I didn't even like that end scene with the general there yeah, when, he, when he brought down the antenna you're thing. spying on me and then the chick oh he's so hot oh i could deal with that i could fucking totally deal with that scene fucking being <sighs> cut out but anyways it was a great movie i give it an 8.5 like you said pretty what 8.5 yeah i think it, it rounds out to that it was it was really good but there was flaws in it where it, it was just flaws that didn't have to be there man you know yeah and and, and you know what though uh, i'm i'm happy as shit that we got a superman movie that 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 we've been waiting for dude waiting for yeah, this like, is the I, one that they should have done this is perfect man when you read the comic books dude this is what you dream about dude. yeah yeah exactly oh my god can you imagine people back then if they saw Come this on dude Okay, let's just compare it really quick. Compare it to Iron Man 3. This is better than Iron Man 3. Okay, compare it to Star Trek Part 2. Um, I think Star Trek's better than this. I think Star Trek is a better movie. I like this more, though. Okay. Yep, definitely. And that's that. So that's our review of The Man of Steel. All right, guys. As always, thank you all for listening. Just a really quick note, our good buddies, Mad Wizell. And Dave's and Daniel, they got their own show going on. It's called Banana Laser. Check it out. Go to www.facebook.com slash pages slash banana laser. We'll see you next week when Jason Voorhees himself from the final chapter dices and slices his way to the dungeon. Okay, that's corny. All right, we'll see you next week.